Hello and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode number 109 for the week of May 20th, 2013. I'm Ryan Higgins, who is here with me this week. Brock Sager. No, uh, go to this guy first. Huh? You. Why? Say your name. Oh, Toby. What's up, Toby? And Charlie. And special guest this week from uh, the East Coast, from the East Coast of Asia, as well as the East Coast of America. Uh, Jim Jokic, back for another episode. Uh, thanks a lot. <clears throat> Happy to be here. Our, is our Taiwan award. actually on the East Coast of the East? Yes, Asia? it actually is. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Jim Taiwanese. Jim has been on a handful of... Sure, half of me. I'm making sure Ryan Higgins knows <laughs> half of me. He just wants to be dissing Ryan and failing miserably. To I, know Shush. I know where Taiwan is. Uh, Jim has been here on the episode uh, a couple times in the past. Uh, he randomly wandered into the store about two hours ago, and I was like, what are you doing here? You want to be on a podcast? So here he is. So back from uh, back from East Coast this time, right? Uh, East Coast, yeah. You've been East home, Coast, Virginia. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Well, good to see you on, Jim. We'll. Uh, oh, sorry, we're closed. Sorry. Um, uh, I love the summer when it's light out and people can see that we're recording. Um, yeah, and we flip the bird to them. Yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> anyway, I'm telling you, you gotta make that it. that hour sign bigger. Not my fault. People Just can't read my awesome. Windows. Not my fault that people can't read my awesome. Uh, uh, clock King hour sign, Clock King from the Batman animated series hour sign. Dude, it's hecka small. That's fine. The lights are off. The doors closed. The open There's no one off. here. Yeah, everything yeah. is off. People just that people doesn't are, mean anything. People are just blind. That's fine. I walked That's into fine. I walked into Lee's Comics with their clothes signed on. Nice. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, you're supposed to have your open sign on. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. You know, All thankfully right. that doesn't happen to me on Sundays, but there are times when I see somebody like driving up that like comes to the shop and I'm like, I'll look over at the open sign and go, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am. It's when you're walking up and the Charlie sign just goes swore. Off. They're like, we don't care for you. <laughs> you know? I just want to say Charlie just swore. From <laughs> Yeah, I do it quite a bit actually. From 11 a.m. to yeah. 6 p.m. From 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm the nicest person ever. And it's XO1. It's like, get the fuck out of my store. I'm going home. <laughs> I just shut down, done, closed, I'm out. So, you know, just note for the future. And I'll then show Toby up. and I show up. Don't show up 10 minutes after we close. I don't mm-hmm. like it. Anyway, what's going on, guys? I show up half an hour after you close. We got a handful of uh, customers. Oh, handful of customers. <laughs> we, got a, <laughs> we, got a handful of qu- we got a handful of questions here. Uh, after that, this is going to be our non-comic conspiracy episode. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about Arrow. Yeah. We'll talk maybe a little bit about Superman Unbound. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk Star Trek in the Darkness. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to talk some Doctor Who. Yes. 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 Uh, and some Morphin Black. Okay. So um, I <laughs> guess if you're sleep. here, that was awesome. you can you can stop listening like 20 minutes in after we stop the questions because they're mostly about comic books. Uh, but I hope you keep listening because we don't do this very often. Uh, just there was a lot of stuff we want to talk about that weren't comic books and we figured we'd shove them all in the one episode. So. Maybe me and Charlie should do a spinoff uh, conspiracy about TV shows and media. I, you can always be on the Geek Box. We had Charlie West uh, was on the Geek Box last yeah, week. He crash landed into it. Yeah, talking some Doctor Who. Yeah, I crash landed into it from what I hear. Through the well, roof and everything. Well, well, like like the like the classic Doctor Who short, his TARDIS and the Geekbox TARDIS collided at the exact same minute, <laughs> and he spilled in our our TARDIS really quickly. He walked in right as we started talking, and I'm like, oh, here comes Charlie, who loves Doctor Who. So sit down. And he talked about Doctor Who for ten minutes, and then he left right as we finished. No, perfect. no, I lurked. Well, you lurked for a little bit. Yeah, you, you creepily <laughs> stood in the back of the You're store, and I had no idea you were still here. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, sorry, man, in the Green Lantern shirt. Seriously, what's up, customers? We haven't been open uh, this late for years on Tuesdays. I'm very, very sorry. Uh, but we're just going to keep recording here. Just, they just, make don't funny lock. Faces just don't, just don't lock it. Just don't lock it. It's fine. So okay, we got some questions there. Make funny there. Faces, though. We got some questions. We got some questions. Show them the bird, right. too. No. no. Please. Uh, this is from Cross X Hunter, frequent uh, Geekbox uh, forums, regular on the El Talk podcast. Hello. And uh, a writer into our podcast. He asks, which Bat books is everyone reading and what is everyone's favorite? Hint. Current? It is Batman and Robin. So that oh, is, he, he wants us to say that. That is, a, yeah, that is, that is his hint for us that, okay. that the favorite is Batman and Robin, which I'm, uh, I'm, I maybe want to disagree Batman with. Batman now? What's that? Wouldn't that just be Batman No, no it changes well, every issue. It's, it's now Batman called... Batman and Batgirl, Batman and Red Robin, Batman and Nightwing, Batman and... <laughs> <laughs> and Carrie Kelly. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Start with Brock. Brock, what's your favorite Batman book right now? Is, or what are you reading? What Batman books are you reading? I'm reading all of them. Are we including Birds of Prey? Sure, why not? Bat and Bat Family? Sure, okay. what are you reading? I'm reading pretty much all of them, except for like Birds of Prey and Nightwing. 
Wait, why'd you included? bring that up then? He goes like, could say that's what I don't so, read. So, yeah. does a clue bird to prey? Oh, oh, that's the one I'm not reading. I, a really I'm positive sure. frog. Really positive, motherfucker. You don't read Nightwing? No. Nightwing is really good. I read Nightwing when he crosses over. It's really wow. good when he crosses okay. over. Okay. <laughs> so, basically, um, Brock is reading everything except for the two books I'm reading. So we compliment yeah, each other. You complete me, Brock. You complete <laughs> me, Toby. <laughs> I just throw up in my mouth. What, uh, uh, Scott Snyder's what? Batman. Okay. I always look forward to that one. Sure. Batman and Robin is is right after that. Okay. And then, yeah, I mean, they're all fairly solid books. Okay. So. Let's go to Jim next. Jim, I, are you reading much current stuff these days? I, or you're, you're mostly trades. I'm still huh? mostly trades. So yeah. I've been picking up the absolutes. I, I like the absolute Batman and Robin reborn. Yeah, the Morrison uh, stuff. Have Morrison you gotten any of the new 52 trades? Have you... I have not. Okay. I, I actually started uh, reading uh, Black. Was it Black Glove? Yeah, uh, yeah. Black Glove. If it's there's a man, I haven't got Court of Owls yet. I haven't got the. Yet, okay. So. If there's a man that can rival Charlie's collection and love of hardcovers, rival. I it's think this it, man I over here. Over, <laughs> over, I, yeah, I think. Sorry, surpasses. Charlie. Yeah, I think no, Jim's no, got I'm, you beat. I, I have collection envy of Jim. <laughs> <laughs> he actually oh, tells I'm, me about it. He calls me up in the middle of the night. Dude, you know, Jim really has a nice collection. <laughs> like at one in the morning, I get a phone call from Charlie. You know, I'm really, really thinking often. about um, Jim's collection. It's really nice. I'm well, really he, looking up to him. He walks in here today, and he's like, oh, I see you restocked your omnibus as a hardcover collection. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, how much for these the shelves? <laughs> and I'm like, well, all right. Well, how many zeros is that going to be? So we'll see. Um, but you read that absolute the Batman and Robin the Grant Morrison yeah, one. Yeah, it was really That's good, good stuff. Really like yeah. really like that one. You read? And I did actually read um, the Death of uh, Damien. Okay, and uh, that was really good. And I read a couple issues back to see what was leading up to that one. Uh, I read a couple issues of the uh, Death of the Family. Yeah, uh, with uh, Joker, just because I love the fact yeah. that his face was ripped off, and I thought uh, that was fantastic. Suggestion for you: don't dilly dally on it. The Death of the Family hardcover that's coming out, uh-huh. the first print only, is going to have like an acetate Joker face on the front, nice. like those issues, and it appeals off to reveal like the the, Ugh, the, the bone meat, face, the, meat, the face. meat face underneath. First print only, so fantastic. Don't uh, absolutely. You're going to make sure it. to order extra for the people. Who oh, yeah, I got a bunch of those okay. coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So don't uh, don't skip out on that one because that's yep. one one print only. Yep. It might be too scary for me. <laughs> it's up to you. Nothing's well, you too scary now. for well, me. Well, actually, have you – since you've read Batman and Robin, have you read Final Crisis? Because uh, that's the – that leads into the Batman and Robin Return of Bruce Wayne. I did. Okay. I actually okay. did read Final Crisis, okay. yep. That's the continuation there. Yep. They haven't – they didn't do the rest of Morrison's run in an absolute form, huh? Yeah. They only no, did no. Batman and Robin no, and Final Crisis. No, but they Crisis. did the oversized, like, deluxe. Right, so, right, right. So, yeah. Yeah, because the Black Love stuff is so good. Yep. Toby, besides wow. Nightwing and Bird's Prey, what are you reading? That's the two I buy. Is that the only two? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it. And uh, reading, I haven't been reading those either. I'm just buying them right now. Uh, I've been busy. Well, with, you've been. I've been busy with the comedy button. I've been busy with a new short film based on a comic book property. It's not a good comic book property. I didn't uh-huh. just say that. But, yeah. So uh, flip a coin and pick one. Oh, between the two? Yeah. Ah, Bird's. Charlie. So to answer which ones I'm reading, I think I can s- safely say all of them. Yeah. You're reading all of the 52. Well, not all of the 52, but all of the Batman really oh, 52. True. Is it Clue Legend of the Dark Knight or the um, Arkham Asylum and all that stuff? Yep. 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 I'm, as far as I know, I'm reading all of the current Batman stuff in issues. So, yep. um, and I think my favorite right now <laughs> is Layman on Detective. That's yeah, you've been, been really you, good. You've yeah, been a big good. booster of that. That's cool. Yeah, I still need to catch up on that one. Yeah, that detective took a huge turn once once Layman yeah. started on that book. It, it like that first issue of Detectives was good, and then it just I don't know what Tony Daniel did with the rest of that story arc. I uh, I, I get I get at, at this point I get every Batman book. Well, actually, I'm, that's not true. I don't get Batwing. Um, but it's not bad. But I, yeah. yeah, I jumped back on Batwing when they changed up the character a bit. Yeah, I just is that Lucius' son now? Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, I, I read it, but I, I haven't been getting that one. That um, actually makes me kind of want to read it. I read it from the start, and I read the first couple, and I was like, nah, I just, I don't, I but need you don't to cut like a few Night books. Trasher. <laughs> Night Trasher is okay. Hmm. Um, so they, this uh, to me is like a Night Trasher Batman. Yeah, I guess, it, well, it's a new one now, so. See, yeah. I kind of see this as a precursor to like the Batman Beyond suit. I can see that. Yeah. Hmm. But, of course, Batman and Robin, yes, is number two. Well, Batman, the Scott Snyder one, is probably the best of the regular ones. Um, Batman and Robin is, is clearly number two, though. Uh, however, 
the actual pick of mine is going to be, of course, be Batman Incorporated because anything by Grant Morrison uh, stands on a different level of, than everything else. So Batman Incorporated has been fantastic. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, what parallel says. dimension on acid. No, exactly. Ryan, Ryan Higgins is field. predictable. I have no ability to pick That's anything okay. that is by Grant if Morrison. If there was a Bat Cow comic, he'd pick that. In there yeah, is <laughs> a Bat Cow comic. It is coming out by um, Dan DiDio yes. and Ethan Van Skyver. It's going to be part of the Batman Incorporated special. But it's not out yet, so you can't pick it. Oh, Bat Cow. <laughs> Back cow's the best. Why don't you go as Bat Cow for Can we have a life size Bat Cow in the store? Yes. No. We oh, absolutely can. I, I think that's a good it. plan. I, 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 I think am that's doing actually kind of cool. I will do this tonight. I will find a cow. I will just find a real cow and make him Bat Cow, and he will be our mascot. Of yeah. The is Bat Cow. All Surprise, right. Surprise, Bat Mite's not your mascot. Uh, no, no, Bat Mite get... is also fantastic. So I love we need to get Mite. a Sword, statue you, you, you of are Bat here. Cow being ridden by Bat Mite, and then we're done. That is the greatest thing ever. You, you have your challenge, here. Jim. Bat cow or bat mic? Both. <laughs> There's your challenge. Make it happen. You're here. You got four days. Oh, four days. Four you days. got four days. Make it happen. You can find a back. You can find a cow mannequin or something. I'm sure someone has one. I think for some I saw reason. a plush bat mite before. Yeah, there's a bunch of bat mite bat figures. Mite. Bat, ma- bat mite in Grant Morrison's Batman run is incredible. I yeah. love as just a storytelling element what they did with bat mite in. Batman and uh, his Batman run was so good. You know what you do is you take human mannequins and you take parts off and build a cow from it. <laughs> man cow. Man, man cow. cow. Nice. It's cow gonna be man. the scariest Batman cow ever. Cow. Yeah. Are we actually having All these right. discussions? Sure. All right. Oh, here's well, one from the rest of us are. You're just giving me that weird look. What the <laughs> hell am I stuck in? Here's one from. Uh, it's actually uh, there's two questions that go well into each other, so I'll read them both. Um, this one's from Cameron, who asks. Uh, Thoughts on why Trinity War was busted down from a big event, and what does DC uh, do in its place? And another one from uh, regular writer uh, Stefano, who asks, "What villains do you guys want to see adorned books in DC rumored DC's rumored Villains Month come September?" As far as I know, Trinity War was busted down for being a big event to lead into Villains Month, which is going to be the big event, and then lead into the. In whether it's this Legion of Doom or whatever the hell, that it's seems be like to be villains. that seems to be the current plan. So Trinity War is a big crossover between the three JLA books. Early on, Trinity War was rumored to be the first big major DC event book. Um, I don't know what caused them to change this or what the deal is, but it's Pandora, um, Phantom Stranger, and the Question, and Justice League, Justice League of America, and Justice League Dark kind of the two trinities but there's also going to be tie-in issues there's going to be a couple but not very many yeah. it's it's a six issue crossover I'm just that you that was one thing i noticed based on the way they were still listening to this event i thought it was going to be originally like throne of atlantis where it was just in the two books mm-hmm. but from well, what well, i was reading in the solicitation it looks like it's going to spill over into the tw- trinity of sin books too. Right, well, but those are the other yeah. right that not those are the other trinity characters so this there's still a lot of rumors, and it, it really does seem like um, September for the two-year anniversary, we had the zero issues, and now the two-year. Uh, there's actually a big article on Bleeding Cool about this as well, that uh, they're going to have Villains Month, which is going to be all the books are replaced by a villain for the month. But the more recent rumor is that it's going to be different. It's not going to be a one-to-one transfer every book to every book. So it's not like Batman's replaced by Riddler. There may be a Riddler and a Joker, and a Two-Face. So there may be a couple, and they may not tie in directly. Some will be the original creative teams of the books, and they'll tie in. Some won't. To me, I that's that screams like a giant pain, because if there's not a direct... Because if, if you're a fan so of... Let's my say, theory is... Let's say you're just a fan of Batwing. You come in, well, there's no Batwing. Well, his villain doesn't have a book either, so I get no book this month? Like, what the fuck? Like, that seems like a really poor decision. See, my theory is Ryan inadvertently started this rumor <coughs> by saying on the podcast that he really hopes they don't do this. <laughs> so yeah. it started the rumor. <laughs> well, I, I, I want there to be... I'm fine with the villain month, but it needs to be from the pages of Red Lanterns... Well, like the Faces of Evil, when they did sure, Faces of Evil sure, back exactly, exactly. in 52, where it was kind of this issue, we're going to highlight this. I don't even mind if it's villain. Joker number one, you know, from the pages of Batman, the Joker, from the pages of, you know, uh, uh, Suicide Squad, Amanda Waller, from the pages of Stormwatch, some shitty thing, because that book's shitty now. Whatever it is, <clears throat> just 
a one to one transfer because how the hell besides so this, does it have to be a one to one? Well, yes. Can they at least do them all so they all have at least one, but then they can have two for certain. Well, titles. there's only forty five new fifty two books out right now, mm-hmm. so that by itself means if they do 45 that are one-on-one transfers and then seven extras i'm totally fine with that if they want to do luther and joker and all these other ones i'm totally fine with that but the and we're going to go into some retailer math here the problem is how the hell does a store order file and sell these books this is not good this is this is going to cause so much trouble if dc actually does it this way so i really hope they don't if they're really, quality really books hope. i'm all for it sure but <laughs> There's a difference between – okay, so let's say there's a Captain Cold and a Captain Boomerang. Okay, well, there's only one Flash book. I guess I'll give these people both, but the people that are left out but, – but how do I order that? It, it, the books tend to stay – unless there's a major creative shift, books tend to stay on a pretty solid base and they keep going in kind of a, you know, a, a kind of repetitive order for the most part when it comes to ordering. Stuff like this throws it all out of whack. Oh, and, I- and with the Zero Hour or the Zero Issue Month, we – we definitely lost sales because of it and after it. The sales went down on all, mm-hmm. across the board because people didn't like that event. The villains thing could be really cool, but if there's no clear continuation, I, I, I worry. They're setting themselves up very easily for another omnibus. I mean, they're going to yeah, they're they're gonna yeah, connect of course. everything into one giant But that's not going to take – that's not going <clears> to <throat> pay for a 5% drop across no, the board not. in sales. No, it's not. Because so. no. did you sell any of the zero? I didn't even order it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I sold what one? I think of the. Uh, uh, I think you sold two. You sold yeah, more than one, one. One or two, yeah. I didn't sell very many. So. Number one. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm excited for Trinity War. I'm excited for this rumored villains event, but I don't know if it's gonna. We'll see what happens. Yeah. You yeah. guys. Another another mini to throw in the back <laughs> of the books. It'll be the first fifty-two minis to throw in the back. Well. To answer um, Stefano's question, what villains do you want to see? Because oh. they've previewed a lot of villains on mm-hmm. DC's blog recently, yes. and that's what's kind of leading this rumor. You know, they had like the new um, Joker's uh, daughter. They had um, there was, was there a new mis- not Mister Freeze. Who was the other Batman one? There was someone else they they had. I can't remember. Well, anyway, so they've they've rumored a bunch of people on there, but who- new villains? Or- no, no, I mean they're mostly classic yeah. villains oh, that okay. are coming back in some fashion. So or alternate reality or villain new and, takes on on classic villains yeah so of the books you're reading and liking who would you want to see or 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 a classic villain return for the first time in in new fifty two because it seems like they're doing a lot of that I'd like to see the Animonger come back oh yeah that'd be a good Green Lantern one mm-hmm. has Clayface made an appearance in new fifty two yep. yeah he's just recently though okay real recently there's a lot of rumor that the Batman one will be the Riddler because. There's a lot of talk that the Riddler is going to be kind of the first big villain that Batman fights in this zero year okay. book that he's going to, like the, the most recent arc or the 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 current arc coming up. So, anyone? I'd like to see a new Fifty Two Solomon Grundy since I just <coughs> saw the action figure. Well, they had he the was in the JSA. Yeah. No, not the JSA. The Earth Two. Earth Two. Earth two. Yeah. Earth yeah. Two JSA light. But yeah, but different different take on Grundy, which which also say I'm sure I don't know if anyone heard, but James Robinson. Walked off Earth Two and quit DC, so I'll buy Earth Two. Yeah, I love you, DC, but what the hell is Get your going house on? Order. Shit, it's bad. Well, I got a. Oh, go ahead, Toby. No, oh, no, I'll finish. Well, I've got I've got an idea about James Robinson leaving um leaving DC. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure it has something to do with other stuff as well, but it would not surprise me in the least. They restarted reprinting all the Starman trades and they did them all in hardcover yeah. they then put the first two out in trade paperback and then canceled them and took everything out of print so they're done they're, they've, they shut down Starman reprints they're not going to finish it and I know from his reaction and stuff on Twitter that he's pretty mad about that and customers are pissed because yeah. like oh you put two issues you put two volumes out and then you just stop it when you put all six out in hardcover and like why would you even do that I guarantee you that has something to do with why he's well, leaving that yep. yeah yeah because I've read the f- first Starman trade and I enjoyed it and I was kind of waiting to find uh, to, to see if they were going to do the softs but I guess now I gotta and those hardcovers are all out of print, print and hundred bucks a pop for, so. as a consumer I mean 
I hate it when they do that. When they mm-hmm. when they when they solicit you know all these trades. When they put out hard covers, they say, oh, we're, we're going to do all this. All of a sudden, one hard cover comes out. Rest of them all soft covers. Or they put out one hard cover, well, one soft cover, and well, then well, in this and then nothing. In this, uh, they know, right? They no put out the entire they put out the entire series in hard cover. Put out the first two soft covers and then cancel yeah, it. Exactly, and they're yeah. done. Yeah. See, well, I. I don't like it when they do that stuff. I think the only time a company has upset me more was Marvel with the Punisher hardcovers. Because they put out all the Marvel Knights stuff. Like We're talking like three hardcovers came out. All they had to do was finish it with the fourth. Yep. And then they never put out the fourth. They just decided, we're just going to put out an omnibus now with all four. Yeah. That ticked me off. Welcome of to the I club. It it's anyways. called Power Chasers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, in terms of villain, I'd like to see back. I don't know. Don't I, take I like a lot of don't some take of those. Uh, don't take mine. Stuff like Doomsday would be cool. Okay. Oh, that yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. Yes. Is that yours? Is sure. That yours? Doomsday yes. will be mine. I want to see Hugo Strange. Yeah. Yeah. They haven't done much with him in the comics. He is actually. Years. Is actually. Um, he's, he's, he's a lot in the games. They haven't yes. done anything with him. Did you guys the see the trailer for uh, Batman Origins or oh, yes. Arkham Origins? Yeah. Where there's something I read recently with him in it. So well, I, I like him in Young Justice. Ar- Arkham Unhinged. No, I saw it was something else. But yeah. um, I, ha- I have a tie with Hugo Strange because the first Batman comic I ever owned was a Hugo Strange comic. So nice. I'd like to see him back. Nice. Uh, we got a couple questions here. Uh, what do you want to see back? Uh, oh, geez. Um... I mean, I'm real curious about that Joker's daughter. I want to see what they do with her because uh, it's kind of a hard character to pull off. But uh, I mean, they've done a handful of I, I. They've done a lot of the rogues, but I, I, I kind of want to see. I don't want to say I want to see like the real Zoom, but I, I kind of do. Like I mm-hmm. love. I, I don't mind this new version of Zoom. We just haven't seen. I mean, he's just barely been in it, so we we don't really know a lot. But Zoom is always one of my favorites. Um, I kind of want to see them do more stuff with the Justice League Dark and bring in mm-hmm. uh, someone other than like Arcane and they're kind of set up the books of magic as sort of this thing, but it's not a lot of villain. Like I, I don't know. Would like, you like to see Lucifer come in? Like the Sandman Lucifer? Yeah. Oh, yo, oh, shit! Actually, that totally reminds me. They haven't brought in um. Uh, oh, I think I saw him on the list. If I'm not mistaken. Oh God, the guy from Sandman, the guy from the first arc. Uh, Dr. Destiny. He hasn't mm-hmm. been in anything yet, has he? No. I thought I saw him. Was he maybe one of the villains that they've talked about is, is coming up? World's Finest? Is he in the World's Finest? Is he? Isn't he the one that they... You or, like, yeah, to, yeah. yeah oh, is that like a yeah, new yeah, take? He's, that's he's, like a new version of yeah, Dr. Version, Destiny, yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah, it's like a couple of guys I like. They've kind of done new takes on it, and I haven't minded them, but... Yeah. I don't know. Oh, no, I'm, I'm with you with the idea of... Classics are classic for a reason. So even if they bring in a new take on it, there's always that part of me that wants to see the the older version as well. Next? Oh, Mister Mind, Mister yes, Mind. There we go. Cool. <laughs> new Shazam book, Mister Mind. New take Mr. on Mister Mind. Mind. He's the best. Okay. Do All you right. do you think the, the, the Mister Mind and Bat Cow need to team up? And there Why we go. Why would he team, team up? up? Yeah. Why yeah. would a villain in a <laughs> villain team up with? It doesn't matter because hey, it's Mr. Mr. Mime that was Doctor Savannah. Yeah, it's okay, Mr. So... Mime and Bat Cow. Like, okay, they fight each other. Sure, the cow fights the okay, crazy. The Bat Cow conversation earlier was ridiculous. Now it's just ridiculous. It with the uh, Ridley coming back. Do you think they're gonna do like the the Nolan version where it's kind of like like the Saw guy? I don't know. These traps and stuff. I don't know. Because since Very we never possible. got to see that in the movies, it kind of yeah. cool to see that in comic books. Yeah. yeah. We got three questions here about. Um, Guys that shoot bows, so I'm going to read them all. Uh, Tour by Joshua, who asks, um, "What are the best Hawkeye stories, excluding the current Matt Fraction run? Um, what Green Arrow trades do you recommend to someone who's interested in the character?" And then uh, I also got one here from um, Lucas, who says, um, "Now that a few issues in to the new take on Green Arrow, what's your well, what do you think about it?" And we got a few questions about Arrow, the show, mm-hmm. but we'll talk about that later. Um, Hawkeye, I'm going to throw this over to Toby. See, well, here's the problem, right? I, I, I grew up reading most of those in German, and the numbering is all off. But yeah. I can tell you, the story with his uh, master, the, the swordsman, is that even right? Is this a swordsman? Yeah. Yeah, all right, because translating in my head about it. But, <laughs> um, Man of the sword? Yeah, 
Well, no, no, he, no he's, swordsman. Yeah, yeah are, it's are, his teacher. Are you talking about like the Tales of Suspense, like the old old school stuff? Or are you talking like the West Coast Avenger stuff? Or? I, I want to say it's a miniseries before that. The, the, no. Oh, his first miniseries. The swordsman, yeah. Yeah, swordsman first appeared in Avengers, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but he but I I really enjoyed the the stuff with uh, with his master and kind of his background and. Uh, him learning about things and stuff like that. I think that's the first Hawk. That's the Hawkeye miniseries, is it? right? Okay. Like from the mid '80s. Is that Jim? Jim's giving me a shake. Nope. 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 No, it's not. Is that from the Ark of Avengers? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I really enjoyed that and uh, basically all the early uh, West Coast Avengers stuff. I even enjoyed the the stuff where they went into the old West. Do you remember that? Where they like meet up with like Ghost Rider? That was like, one the of the old Ghost yeah. Rider. That was stuff? one of the early arcs of Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah and that, which that. they've at this point between the between the West Coast Avengers omnibus and they just solicited for a second one, and the trade paperbacks they've collected like like the first hundred issues of this series oh, now. Fuck yeah, yeah. So I gotta they've save some money. Uh, they've collected a lot I of. Gotta them Gotta pay off Ryan and actually buy some. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hawkeye's one of those characters, though, to me that's always been in the background, but there's very few stories where he's like kind of front and center. Yeah, his gonna... his ongoings and everything. I mean, I'm not a fan of the current one, but I mean, I get people love it. That's okay. I am. I know. Up until this recent one, though, all his series that they've they've tried a few times and they've all failed and been terrible. And and he's always been kind of regulated to this just awesome supporting size uh, character, but just couldn't ever. Be front and center. Well, on the West Coast, I think he's up front. He's the leader. But but, it, but that, but at that has, point, it's, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, no, it's, it's a team a, book, right? It's a team book, yeah. It has a um, cast of characters. But that that old, old West one I really liked with Mockingbird and stuff like that. That was yeah. when they went back in time. That, that was, was like really, second arc maybe of, of West Coast. Avengers. Oh, was it? It was really early. Yeah. That was yeah. really good. Yeah. It's, well, all of that really early stuff I really like. So Yeah. In terms of the current stuff, I think in the next previews, there's supposed to be a nice oversized hardcover for the new stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, of the, of the, the Matt yeah. Fraction run, yeah. I'm excited for that. For Green Arrow trades, there's... See, I can contribute more on this one. Well, <laughs> there's five worth reading, and no, oh, one, Archer's two, three, Quest. four, five. Five worth reading, six, five or six worth reading, and one of them's out of print. Archer's Quest is D1. Archer's Quest was awesome. Yeah, fantastic. that's a fantastic So book. there is there is the very first... Uh, a, f- a Green Arrow miniseries, which Quiver? is Long- Longbow oh, Hunters. Longbow Long Hunters, Hunters yes. Fantastic, yes. Which is in the 80s. Yes. And that is, that is when they transfer Green Arrow sort of from the, from the you know, Batman in green to, like, no, this is, like, a guy that kills people and he is fucking hardcore. And this is what then launches the ongoing series. Yeah. Um, after that, it's Quiver, which is the first Kevin Smith. Yep, yep. And that's out of print. Is yeah. it? And there is no plan to bring that back, at least currently, which to me is baffling. Yeah. DC was going to do an omnibus. They need to do an omnibus of the Kevin Smith run of the of the Green Arrow. Well, he only he does no, that's not a lot. He only well, does well, no, no, first not just two. not just Kevin Smith, but all that the, all those sequentials right right behind them. It's like up to three you know, five. Um, it was really quiver. Good. Uh, Sound of Violence, um, Archer's Quest. Those are two and those three, are which yeah, those runs. are the Brad Meltzer issues. Yeah. And that with the other two I was going to suggest. Right. The, the uh, Volume two and three of Green Arrow, which are the two arcs by Brad Meltzer, oh. those are also also incredible. I th- yeah, yeah so I actually think those are yeah. D1 to read. Volume two still say Kevin Smith. Or three, I'm sorry, three and four. Archer's Quest and, and uh, Sound, Sound, Sound of Violence, yeah. the Kevin Smith ones, uh, What's the third? It's, it's well, it's Quiver and Sounds of Violence. Quiver, oh, right. Sounds of Violence, Kevin Smith. Archer's, Archer's Quest. Yeah. Archer's Quest, and then there's one and other there's, one. Uh, I forget the one that yeah. that one. But. So those are the uh, Brad Meltzer ones, and so that <laughs> those entire – I reread those three constantly. Yeah. They're yeah. fantastic. They're kind of like the, uh, the Green Lantern Reborn type. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. just like it's really up there. Yeah. Archer's Quest is phenomenal. Um, Ano, I, Anomanopia was fantastic yeah. in Sounds <laughs> of Violence. Green Arrow, year one. Which is then a much of the influence of yeah. the flashback sequences of Arrow, mm-hmm. yeah. which is uh, which is by um, Andy Diggle, Andy Diggle yeah. right? With art by Jock, who's is that? Why incredible. the black guy is named Diggle? Yeah, yeah. is it really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And then I will also I will pre recommend get that to just now. I will, <laughs> yeah, I will pre recommend the whatever the arc is for the current trade volume three, whatever volume okay. three will the be, Lemire. because pretend volume one and two don't exist in the new fifty two yeah. stuff because they're terrible. Uh, but start with what's going to come out next because okay. this series is awesome. So I would also suggest the two brightest day. Um, yeah, the, the yes, they put yes. those are okay. I like those. Yeah, those. Are I good. like those a lot. Those are okay. Um, I would also suggest the um, Green Lantern. 
Oh, Green, no, the, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, the yeah. um, yeah, oh, the resolic- yeah, that, yeah, that trade's coming out pretty soon too. The, uh, the resolicit, it, it, it's out, it's out. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So they re- so they put out a collection of the '70s Green Arrow, Green Lantern, which is the yeah. Denny O'Neill and uh, Neil Adams yeah. Yeah. Uh, run yeah. on yeah. Green Arrow, really Green good. Lantern. Yeah. Right. That that's going to be actually pre. That's going to be your first volume because yeah. that's sort of. I mean, at that point, he's still Batman in, with a bow and arrow, but it's well, they're getting away from from. It's yeah. also more of a social commentator. Which, sure. Whoops. Yeah. Well, that's where they kind of set up him as like the super liberal, and yeah. yeah. Didn't he at one point have an aeromobile? Right, exactly. Like a yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The aeromobile, yeah. and they make fun of that in the. In the I think, I think no, that was the, the aeroplane. <laughs> he had the aeroplane. Well, he also. had like the arrow cave and everything, yeah. and they, that's yeah. what they're ripping on all that stuff because like he's that's in the not the Brad Meltzer one where he sells he, the arrow he, car. He, he uh, rips yeah. on all that stuff in the cave. Yeah, yeah. The yellow submarine, the yeah. aeroplane. So, yeah. So there's <laughs> a um, scene in the Injustice comic. I I don't remember what part it was, but it's a scene between Green Arrow and Harley Quinn when he's trying to protect Harley Quinn from Superman, and he takes her to the arrow cave. Yeah. And she just starts going on, why on earth would you call it an arrow cave? It makes no sense for you to have a arrow cave. Why didn't you name it something cool? And he's like, well, what would you call it? And he's like, I'd call it your quiver. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going way long here. Uh, we still have a lot of stuff yes, to talk yes, about. We so let's uh, – we got a bunch of questions, good questions I still want to read here. But we'll uh, we'll have to get to some of these next week. Um, so uh, – Feel free on Monday night to send me some questions over Twitter or email. And, uh, so do we'll you get want to, to address the Iron Man 3 post that you promised you were going to address today? Oh, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I, I would have to pull up I the post. You do that to him. I would have to pull up the post and reread it now. But no, but do if you, it. What promises, yeah. man? You make promises no, and you don't No, I have keep. to go back. It's a giant post. I have to go back and reread it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it, though. I'll do it. Jim, you saw Iron Man 3. What do you yes, think? Yes, I did. Quick. Did you like it? I did. I enjoyed it very much. It was okay, a lot. Okay, well, then I don't want to talk to you then. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan the Bully is back. Oh, that's it. I'm out. <laughs> Ryan the Bully is back. <laughs> Let's talk about a good superhero thing. Let's talk about Arrow. You guys ever watch Arrow? Oh, yeah. You watch it. Yes. Uh, Jim, you've seen the first few. I've seen the first few episodes on the plane, actually. So, it was, okay. uh, yeah, I got to enjoy them. Brock, they had them on the plane, or uh, you brought them on the plane? No, they had them on the plane. Oh, very nice. Yeah. You've seen so a So, you're hooked now? Oh, okay. Yes, I am. Yeah. You've seen a couple, Brock? Yeah, I got to episode nine. I, okay. I finally got episodes 10 to the end. Okay. So, I'll hopefully be caught up in you, the next month or so. You guys mind if you spoil that? I don't, the I don't Keep on going. I'm went, I'm Captain Jack is actually Superboy. I'll, f- I'll forget like by the time yeah. I get to it. So I- I've actually wanted to talk about Arrow on the show. I'm not, I'm not actually sure why we haven't. Um, so maybe season two, we'll, we'll, every couple of weeks, we'll do a little recap. Uh, for those who haven't been watching Arrow, uh, is a uh, TV show. It would have been 23 episodes, maybe. Yes, 23 yeah. Episodes. yeah. It's um, primarily written for girls. No. Yes, it is. There's yeah. a lot of... There's a lot of shirtless guys. There's a lot of shirtless guys. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying that there's not a lot of shirtless it's, guys. It's, it's, a, it's, teenage, a, prime, it's a teenage drama now. Primarily shot for girls. How about that? Well, let me, let okay, put, I'll give you shot for girls. Let me put it this way. Huge on Tumblr. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Is it really? Huge on Tumblr. That's, that's, all, that's all, <laughs> I knew it. That's all I'm going to say. I knew it. Because well, the first from, couple episodes when I watched, I was like, damn, his shirt comes up off. a lot. <laughs> like, all the freaking time. So well, I remember when like they were nominating best new character on something and they nominated his abs <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah that sounds right so um so they basically set up arrow uh green arrow in this they never call him green arrow but they all set up oliver queen uh you got in a terrible crash uh in the ocean there's a lot of this comes out of batman or uh, batman out of uh, green arrow year one on um, the andy, andy diggle book uh basically he lands on this island and we get this whole kind of lost like flashback where oh we're, we're kind of getting flashbacks in every episode that goes back to the island right. and he was there for five years and so we're slowly getting his life on the island but in the current show it's, it's he's back he's he's back and now yeah. he's like I have this book my dad did all this terrible stuff I have a book of people that have wronged the city I'm going to kill them all 
or, or get rid of them all in some fashion or another. So make be, them pay. You He's going to go few. up and tell them, you better do what I say or I'm going to yeah. kill you. And then you they don't failed the said, city. And then he kills them. Yeah, he puts on his Batman Some of that and, stuff is a little cheesy. Like, be honest. Yeah. Be it's honest. It's, it's awesome. A, yeah, no, come shot, on, be honest. Shot, man. It's a little cheesy. shot in the eye. Yeah. yeah. It's you like, gotta love damn. that. <laughs> I remember when they you can't killed... deal dead shot in the first uh, episode and one well, of the first episodes, man. Well, he doesn't. Spoiler, oh, okay. spoiler well, alert. You and I'm not gonna make fun of you right now for saying it. When he when he got shot in the eye, I was like, oh, okay, so that's how he gets a cybernetic eye, and he'll be back in a few episodes. And everyone was like, no, they killed him. I'm like, are you dumb? Like. What are you talking about? This is Deadshot. Yeah. Sure enough, a few episodes later, shows up with the cybernetic guy, and I'm like, I fucking <laughs> I'm told you. In a few episodes. I, 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 I thought, I thought, I thought I'm was. on nine, and I didn't get there yet. You know so. what I mean. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. I thought he did have a cybernetic eye at that time. No, no, no he had a little. Oh, just the lens that he had. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That early Deadshot, they kind of set him up a little more like kind of the original take on Deadshot, and then when he comes back, he's a little bit more like okay. the, like the modern version of Deadshot. Nice. So it's a nice, nice little transition. Oh, it's a better Deadshot shot than they had in Smallville. So uh, yeah. Well, that's that's actually a throwback, a real throwback to the original, the original which one, I right? thought there's that was a, no reason to to go to that version because that's a, he was like a Western guy and that was a bad version. Yep. Um. Anyway, so uh, going in the finale, um, we have Merlin and Merlin. We have Tommy Merlin, his buddy, and mm-hmm. I forget. I don't even remember his name. Is it John? Not John. Jack Merlin. J- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jack Harkness. Uh, Jack, 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 Jack Harkness Merlin. Merlin. Uh, I'm totally blanking on his name. Um, John Merlin? You have the internet. They, I just always referred to him primarily as Merlin. Merlin. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so in the comic books, Merlin has always been one of uh, Green Arrow's biggest villains. Yep. Uh, so in this, they're clearly and, a very different take on the character. Well, as well, but they still kind of had the same sort of take on he sort of outdoes what, like, Green Arrow's always sort of been established as a very good archer, combatant, and all that but sure. he's, he's no like bullseye or anything and like they kept him mortal within his abilities right and right, merlin right. was always sort of like that one step higher than him but in this we're just kind of hit the the son is you know uh, ollie's best friend uh who while he was gone slept with his girlfriend diana laurel lance well uh started a Dian- relationship yeah. now wouldn't it be cool if tommy yeah. becomes a new merlin diana laurel lance which well we'll get to that uh <laughs> which is which is both black canaries rolled into one the mom mm-hmm, and the daughter right. rolled into one character uh so you That's know just how some people like it. <laughs> all, you, you oliver think queens that river song was the mom oliver queens i'm not there yet oliver queens girlfriend and then when he's gone she hooks up with tommy and then backs there's the love triangle between the three of them they should so, have a three well, well, get out well, well, to be fair he was hooking up with her sister right so. right right twin so sister. going going into the finale it's here it's twin no it's not no it's not it's twin sister older sister. No. No. older sister going into the finale we're basically set up with uh ollie's mom dad uh Merlin, the dad, and this group of people are all the all the rich socialites are like we have to destroy the shitty part of we have to destroy the slums. Well, right? Merlin's the one. Well, Merlin, how on we have to destroy the slums? Everybody else is pretty much going. Don't fucking kill me. Yeah, yeah, because so you know, like you know, he they pulled a Bruce Wayne and his his wife got killed. You know, going through the slums one day, and uh, so he's like, we're just gonna wipe it off the map, and the city will be better without it. So going into this finale, where we're you know this is clearly the setup here is that you know Oliver is trying to stop Merlin and trying to stop this this like well earthquake if you machine. want to go into the finale he's <clears throat> already failed to stop him well, well, well. Right, get, it, it, I, the finale is kind of a two parter I mean it's very much continued from the previous episode so those last two episodes are kind of like a two part finale because it is really one basically go watch yeah. the Dark Knight and come back sure uh, or rises. Well, so we're go- we're getting into this, we're getting into it, and uh, uh, he confronts Merlin and gets his ass beat for a second time. He got his ass yep. kicked, you know, earlier in the season when he first comes across him as like the archer, right? He, they, they throw him, you know, they put him in as he's the black archer. Well, I mean, they still haven't referred to him as Green Arrow and all that. Yeah, there's a so. joke in one of the Jeff Johns episodes where he's like, oh, well, you know, Green Arrow. No, that's a stupid name. Like they just keep mm-hmm. calling him the, you know, the, the hood. The hood or the, 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 vigilante. the vigilante. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. I think it makes more sense in a real setting. <clears throat> if it was yeah. Like, yeah. So also in the flashbacks, there's this kind of story where his like, he meets this former Chinese, uh, uh, 
military guy mm-hmm. that's now trapped on this island with him. His daughter, who is he Shadow, starts keeping him alive to begin with. Like he would right. have just been fucking killed on the island if it right. wasn't for that guy stepping in. So this is sort of like the parallel story that goes along with it. Um, so it ends up being uh, Green Arrow. He finds Deathstroke. I'm not. Or, 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 um, Slade I'm, Wilson. I'm Slade Wilson. A uh, dead uh, Deathstroke. Well, I'm not even going to go into the weird. Wade Deathstroke. Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Crossover. And, and the Asian guy's daughter, Shadow. So it's a very, you know, even though these are ca- not the characters there at the time, these are the characters that they all become. And it's a very interesting team up because those are yeah. two of Green Arrow's greatest enemies is Deathstroke and Shadow. Right. Uh, that's Shadow with S-H-A-D-O, by the way, too. Um, She's hot. I so- was actually going to ask because I saw the first episode <laughs> and when he – when he's getting picked up from the island, you see Deathstroke's, Deathstroke's mask yeah, yeah. on a pike or something like that. The, mm-hmm. There's two Deathstrokes on the island. Don't don't even just watch. I'll they, watch. They it. I'll keep on going. Right, make, keep, now, keep going. Now keep the going. two Deathstrokes is it, it actually sense. is it the 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 you know the colored half is it on the other side? That's a good question. I don't know. I've never paid close if, enough attention. For some to reason, it. I thought the one Deathstroke had it on one side, the other one had. I, I could be wrong. No, but. you could. No, you could be right. I, I actually didn't realize that. It's very possible, though. Yeah, they're basically a mercenary pair working okay. together. But but you know, well, they so, were working together. Yeah. So in the last two episodes, though, spoiler. So all this I'm is spoil all of it. <laughs> so we have Ollie is taken by off the island. Ollie is taken by uh, Merlin, and on the and on the island. Ollie, Deathstroke, and Shadow are taken by uh, what's his name? Myers. Uh, My no, no. no. The, the 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 villain, the bat on yeah. the island, right? Who's working for a mysterious person? We don't know. Um, he's trying to actually blow up a uh, Ferris aircraft plane as well. So a lot of that, and nice. a lot of that in the show. Uh, and so we go into the end where he's pretty much boned in both situations. Uh, probably the wrong word to use. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's he's boned. He's pretty boned. And he's shirtless again. Of oh, course, shirtless. <laughs> he's boned and shirtless. And there's a guy named Roy that really has a hard hunt for him too. Uh, keep and going, keep going. You know, yeah, Roy Arsenal's in it as well. But so it, this is one of those interesting shows where it kind of is. It, it does. But they both end on really bad notes. Yep. So on the island, the father, Shadow's dad. He does his little thing that the that the that the bad guy on the island wants him to do, and then he the fucking video. kills him. And then they, they want him to take the blame for the plane going down, so right. they make him film video saying, "Yeah, that was me." And then afterwards, well, you served your purpose, yeah. blah, blah, blah. and he shoots him in the head and kills yeah. him. And this is the guy that had trained him and helped him on the island mm-hmm. and everything like that, and helped him survive. And then he, uh, you know, Greeno eventually kills kills the guy that killed him, but you know, clearly bad times off the island. You know, back in modern day. Uh, they stop the device. Um, uh, Dinah's dad, he's the cop in the show. Well, who's right. awesome, by I the guess, way. I love right. him, too. Like, on the island. So, yeah, he dies, but they kind of ended on a good note because they stopped the overall well, a plan. Be- a better and, note, but yeah. still. They stopped the plan, but they still lose one of their guys. Off yeah. the island, the device goes off anyway. They th- They think they stop it. Oh, but there's a second. Well, the way they make it seem like, yes, there was redundancy, but it wasn't necessary. Like you kind of needed both. The entire the world, exactly. <laughs> yeah. the, the entire area would have been trashed. Instead, you end up with a good section of it. Yeah, one of the two go off. Uh, the glades, that's what they yeah. call it. And the glades gets half destroyed. Yeah. Um, and in trying to save uh, Laurel, Laura, the Laurel, um, Tommy Merlin gets crushed and impaled uh, through the stomach with a uh, with like a girder and dies. Uh, oh, what? That's what happened? Yeah, he I thought fucking... that was a doppelganger. No, no I'm kidding. I <laughs> was trolling everybody. <laughs> and right previous to that, when it's when all this shit's going down, uh, he ends up fighting Merlin and and stabs him th- and through the heart with the arrow and kills Merlin. So in the he kills Merlin. Well, I don't no, want to hear it. People were telling me the, he didn't die. He fucking died. The only thing that bothered me about that scene to a degree is he didn't just stab him. He stabbed him through himself. Well, he did like the whole like I stab myself through the shoulder, but it hits his heart yeah. sort of But sort then of it thing. doesn't slow him down okay. at all. After Like they don't even acknowledge the fact that he. No, it's. Like oh, an issue oh, of Suicide yeah. Squad. No, no, a a live free, die hard thing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. wait, Captain Jack is dead. Shoots himself through the bullet hole. <laughs> in the last, in the last episode, we basically have 
Shanna's dad dies, both Merlins die, and the friggin' bomb goes off in this you know, earthquake machine, whatever, goes off in the city and destroys like half the city. And his mom's confessed to the conspiracy. Oh, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and so she's she's arrested yeah. and she's got in jail and stuff like that. Um, yeah, this show ends on a pretty goddamn down ending. <laughs> like, <laughs> they didn't think they were going to get a second season. They were like, fuck it, let's blow everybody up. We'll well, kill no, everybody. It was a hugely early pickup. I you know, know, I know. You know I'm what? joking, guys. I'm joking. Jesus. I almost think, though, if you if you end on, a, on an ending like this, it's almost like, well, you got to give us another season because look where we, look where we left it. <laughs> but to me, it's like what's so interesting about this is they've killed off really the what should be the villain of the show. Like so, sounds like they killed off the best friend, the villain, the other villain, you know. Yeah, so you know, I don't care of the mom. They wrapped it up. Yeah, it, it's weird because I'm like, well, where the hell do they go now? Like, it seems. Merlin, awesome. Doesn't he still have a list? Yeah, but those guys are small potatoes okay. compared yeah, yeah. to Merlin. They, they pretty but, much made it set up that he felt like if he could stop this attack on the Glades, he would essentially have redeemed his father for his part in being part of this plan to level the Glades. So they kind of set him up for the traditional, you know what, if I can stop this, if I can put an end to this plan, then maybe I can have my life back. Maybe I can walk away from this holy mission or whatever you want to call it. I, I, I know. He's put himself on. And a season two is going to be Oliver creating a crime. He gets thrown in jail. He has this master plan about breaking out of jail with his mom. And uh, he has all these other people in jail that go, <laughs> go with him. A la Prison Break Season 1. If you, if you mean um, Supermax, the rumored Green Era movie, where that's yeah. exactly the plot of the movie. Is it really? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, I, was, I was wondering if you were spoofing off of that. Yeah. Because that was yeah. the plot well, of the movie. I was yeah. spoofing off a of Prison Break, but Green, Green I, I gladly see an Oliver Queen breakout season. Yeah, this, this plot of this movie that was rumored a couple of years ago was Green Arrow gets thrown in prison, Oliver Queen kind of undercover. Yeah. And he's kind of teams up with like the suicide squad and he's like dude that'd be a cool season two get we gotta get this shit out of the prison Boom. And, and season two he, done we got it yeah yeah like that would be badass but this show like every level of this show it, like it, yeah there's, there's there's cheesy elements because you know, whatever it's it's uh it's, know, on the CW. it's on the cw but like i don't know even going into this last episode like, there are big crowd shots. They really use, like, big downtown areas of the yeah. city. Like, they're not shooting this thing on a lot and a lot of – I mean, clearly some of it. But they have right. big open areas where they're sh- clearly shooting in, in, you know, downtown and big cities. Um, the special effects are, are pretty decent. Like, I'm, I'm actually – they must be throwing a little bit of money behind this show because it doesn't seem cheap. It, they, they, well, I'm, well, they I'm go surprised. like this. They go, hey, Oliver Queen – Take your shirt off, and we'll give you more money. <laughs> so he takes off his shirt, and there's more money. <laughs> if, Oliver Queen, if Ollie is shirtless three times in this next episode, we get to blow up. We a will city. finance you for three more episodes. I actually want to see if uh, you talk about. It. I'm going to look up and see if I can find what the ratings are for that. So you know, uh, the you know ratings what? are good for the CW, but not good for typical network television. Did like they cars. are they matching it's, small bills? I think it's actually been better than the last yeah, season. It was like, a better show than Smallville. Let's but say it's that. only getting Come about on. three million it's not, viewers not per episode. Mm. You know, here, 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 the, okay, one point oh. I loved Smallville. The finale had two point six five, which that's big for CW. Yeah, and that's big for a show like this. Like, like yeah, th- that's that's big. That's hey, big. So season two, where they go into the whole prison break thing. Roy is still on the outside. He's going to become the new hood. Ah ha ha ha! it out. Like, didn't I hear him call his sister Speedy? Yeah. yeah. Yes. They kind of combined. Uh, uh, well, you want to know something more? Well, Mind fucking sure. His sister dating Roy Hopper. So basically, the two of them are the one character. Nice. Yeah. Speedy and Speedy are dating. <laughs> wow. She's got okay. the drug abuse. He's he's the guy that can do the flips. So, oh, okay, yeah, so they're, they're, sure. they're literally split the two characters into one, so, like the one character well, into two. I think they kind of did the you know what? Let's bring in this actual character now. Yeah, yeah. But it's a great show. Um, and I, am I crazy? Is season two starting like like soon? I, I thought I had heard like a, I thought I heard like a release date like. Is it just coming back in September? Like no, it had to be September. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're not going to do anything. It wouldn't be. Then. It would no. be really weird if it. Comes yeah, back but, early. but 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 I mean, we're. I think we're they talking, might be starting back up filming I'm just, in the near future. Maybe that's but, what it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so used to shows like oh, we got ten episodes of Game of Thrones. See you in fucking nine, you know, ten months. 
But this is like, oh, Walking cool. It's, it's yeah. Well, oh, cool. because it's a, it's a network show. It's done at the end of May. It starts in September. I literally don't follow any shows that do that anymore. Yeah. So, like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, that, that, maybe that just feels very short. It does. After so. waiting six months for a new Walking Dead season, yeah, it more does. than six. Yeah, yeah, it's it gonna does. Be, you're gonna be close like to a year week. for Psych. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, Psych was really bad, but yeah. Walking Dead, I heard that it's not gonna be till uh, 2014. What? I thought it was That's October. Again. Is it October? It's gotta be. Yeah. They gotta. They gotta do something in October. I. I. I they heard they were. They might. They might break it like. Do half. Well, they always do. do. They I heard they talks. They always do like six and, and six. Well, and we six gotta wait till five. November till we get Doctor Who. I thought I heard yes. something about it being in 2014, but wow. and then and then straight through. But I don't know. I don't it's know. not as bad as the Sherlock. What? <laughs> yeah, twenty three years on that. Yeah, um, I'm fine with it. I love. But it landed Sherlock. on cliffhanger. How can you be fine <laughs> with it? Good. I am perfectly fine with it. All right, let's. Uh, as long as I okay. keep promising me more, he can go do all his movies. What? He's on the BBC. You can keep coming back and doing more Sherlock. It's going to be the next Doctor. He brought in um, Bener- Benedict Cumberbatch. Let's let's go to let's go to Star Trek. Star Trek. Um, oh, I, by the way, spoilers for all the shit we're talking about. I should have said that a half an hour, I should have said that a half an hour ago. <laughs> so at the beginning of the podcast. So, but yes, this Matt, is a retro spoiler for those yeah, of you. <laughs> yeah, if you listen for last, the last twenty minutes were all spoilers, <laughs> by the way, and in the next twenty minutes will be all well, spoilers. By the way, you did ask before we got started. Are you yeah. okay if we spoil it? Yeah. yeah. No. yeah. So, uh, Star Trek. And we all saw Star Trek. Yes, right? absolutely. Okay. Yep. Um, let's let's do a. Let's do a round table here. Let's start with Charlie. Uh, I loved it. W- uh, one to four star. W- where are you? Four. W- or one to five star, I guess. Five. But, okay. So <laughs> so perfect. Compared to his group, Charlie was like, let's do this. Let's do this. Compared to the 2009, and then compared to, like, original, next gen, like, like, like it's different, but what's your, what's your take? I like this one better than 2009. I need to see it again before I can accurate. Well, I need to see the old stuff and it again before I can accurately compare. Because right now, I would say this is better. But What's I your do f- feel like there's a different feel and style to it that Absolutely. makes it much harder to. So, right, I, I think, and we'll, we'll it's we'll, the Joker comparison, right? Do, I, do you compare Jack Nicholson's Joker to Heath Ledger's Joker? They're two separate, but, well, kind of. Well, this is way off on a different on a different type because I've, and I, I think we should each kind of give our, our feelings on this because the original and the next gen and the movies and DS Nine it's a lot of politics and a lot of talking and very little in the action but yeah. especially because it was there are mostly TV shows where this is star the best Star Wars in thirty years yeah. and it's action 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 so these are very different types of movies. I think you did it on purpose. Okay. Yes. This is the best Star Wars in 30 years. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, you know what's going to happen is he's going to do Star Wars now and it's going to be the most boring Star Wars <laughs> you ever seen. All talking yeah, 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 and all politics. Talking so, about philosophy. Yoda is going to be sleeping the whole time. And Yeah. So, Tobe, what well, do you they're all sure? old and using Jedi walkers. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know. One, one to five stars. <laughs> five. Five Easily. just straight up. Easily. Okay. Easily. Compar- com- better than 2009. Same. I, I, I don't think they go hand in hand. I, I don't I don't think it's better or worse. I mean it's the same. Yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I love the two thousand nine one and this wouldn't be here if the first one didn't exist. So yeah, 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 I, yeah. you know, it's kinda like, you know, Dark Knight and Batman Begins and sure. Rises, right? Sure. The one can't exist with the other one. Yeah. So perfect setup. I, now do you prefer this over like TOS TNG style stuff or is it just too different to compare? I think it's too different to compare, but if I had to pick, yeah, I'm going to go with this. And, yeah. uh, and for one reason alone, it's Zoe Saldana. She didn't exist in the original <laughs> one, so I'm sorry. I got to go with the new ones. So Guardians of the Galaxy is your favorite uh, uh, Marvel movie, Absolutely. I'm so right? on board. Okay. I didn't care. Not a bit. <laughs> Until they hired Zoe Saldana. I was like, all right, Ryan, I'm in. All the way. I don't care. <laughs> the movie's going to be awesome. It's going to be my Green Lantern now. Hi, right, Jim. You got a couple of years on us. You're an old school Trekkie. I know you are. Uh, I'm a... Closet Trekkie, but I love. I love. I was. Is I there a Trekkie like, outfit in your closet? I, no, there's not. Okay. I didn't like the the TV series so much. I did watch a few way okay. back when, but okay. I did really, really enjoy the movies. Okay. Did you and get then, into the shows later, or I got into the some of the shows a little bit? You know, I did a little bit of Generation, a little bit okay. of DS Nine. Okay. I thought all you were a bigger of, fan all of all of Voyager. Voyager, but uh, oh, he came in really. But, Voyager's uh, underrated. But uh, I, I, I truly of this, uh, I, I actually watched the first one on my 70-inch screen in Blu-ray before I went and saw in oh, da- yeah. Into Darkness. Oh, yeah. 
fantastic. I had no idea where it was going when when he was talking to him. Oh, really? And I had I didn't know any spoilers or nothing like that when that all That's happened the and then everything it. started happening behind after yeah. that. I mean, this movie is fantastic. It's yeah. it, it like Toby said, it's Batman Begins and Batman uh, the Dark Knight all over again. Yeah. It was a fantastic movie by itself. And um compared to the other movies, I mean, I watched the other movies they were showing them all over sci-fi and everything the the weekend before, the week before. And um those are good movies on their own, but J.J. Abrams took these two to a whole new level. And uh, kind of what Nolan did. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. It really is. It's a fantastic movie. So five stars. I, I'll give it five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, five and a half now. Five and a half. Go oh, on. Oh, Go on. I'm going six stars. <laughs> now, Brock, I, I don't. You don't. You didn't like Old Track, huh? You never. I never watched. You never watched Old Track. I never watched Kurt Spot Track. I mean, it, about, it was about, on TV sometimes, but I never really like watched. I watched uh, Next Gen. Did you get into Next Gen and, all and that? DS9? Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't really catch any Voyager. Talking or of Enterprise. next gen spoilers, you know that the guy Cumberbatch playing is John Luke Picard. <laughs> That's what I told Ryan after we watched it. No, but the place <laughs> That's why he blows British. up Section Thirty One. That's from uh, DS Nine, and then later Enterprise. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, that's, that's a uh, nice little throwback there. there. Here's another trivia. spoiler. That Dreadnought was awesome. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, <laughs> I want one. <laughs> I, 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 I always enjoyed the TV shows giving us, you know, kind of, they gave us enough action and enough, you know, for what it was. Um, so I always enjoyed them. I and mean, DS9 was just fun uh, to watch. Um, I think that what Abrams did in 2009 was revitalize Star Trek for our generation or for this generation, and he did an amazing job doing that. And I mean, Grant, the first time I saw it, I kind of didn't like it. Be- what the first one? What the, the hell? First, the yeah. the two thousand nine. Because anytime there's there's time travel in a movie, um, I have I, it. I'm the Back to the Future guy, where I have to kind of figure everything out and know what's going on. So the movie was moving so fast that I didn't get a chance to do that, so it kind of gave me a headache because I'm trying to watch and enjoy this movie and think about time travel in the back of my head. <laughs> See, um, for me, time travel is just such a, You know what's funny? I've actually had conversations with people about like time travel and, and parallel dimensions and all that, and they're like, I don't oh, understand. Really? And I'm like, well, it's just because parallel dimensions, something changes in the past and everything's fine. And they're like, I don't... What are you talking about? No, like, like, people no, can't process no. <laughs> that this is... I had to explain to friends about Age of Apocalypse. Oh, about yeah. time yeah. travel back. Oh, that... Friends. That's I mean, a fun one. And they, they, it, they to me, it's not, like they could not comprehend yeah, it's, an alternate time. How, how one thing would change everything yeah, else. Yeah. To me, it's like the like, simple. It's like yeah, of course, this is yeah. sci-fi one on one. But I mean, I've you know, I've talked to people and, and you know, family members and stuff like that, and they're like, but I don't. But that's not. I don't get it. Like I don't understand what. And I'm not saying they're stupid. I'm just saying like it's such a weird Brian's concept. Brian's so. calling you stupid. No, 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 no. No, no, I, I'm, no, no. For me, it's. I'm not. I, I understand it. I'm joking, I just have I'm joking, to. I'm joking. I'm joking, Brock. I'm like, I literally have to plot out the line. I yeah. For some people, I'm joking, Brock. I'm sorry. I'm joking. For, for people that break. that oh, that aren't really into science fiction and time travel, like it. It is not a concept that people consider or even think about. Well, for me, I'm like, of course, there's infinite parallel dimensions. Sure, of like, <laughs> like, of course there is. What are you talking about? This is this is a known fact. But some people are like, oh, what is it? I don't understand. Do you know what I was having fun doing before going to see Into the Darkness? What's that? I was in- into darkness. Into darkness. Whatever. Um, so what, what my what, brain what's was the third, doing? What's the third Batman movie? I still don't remember the name of it. <laughs> Dark, Batman Dark, Rises. Dark Knight Rises. Okay, there we go. Okay. Batman Rises. Any event. Um, so my brain was sort of plotting out all the time travel they've done in Star Trek, figuring out what time travel actually still happened with the new universe. So technically speaking, there's still the old Spock and the old Kirk going back in time to San Francisco, yep. saving the whales, mm-hmm. even in the yep. current Star Trek. <laughs> oh, and they go back to, you know, they go back with the... Um with the uh, yeah. uh, 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 Days of Future, um, Days of yeah. Future Past. I see it in Edge Forever. They go through, you know, yeah. and they go back. So and you still have Back's first World contact with the Borg and all that still would have happened because this time travel would well, back not, Well, no. Well, no. Neither of those would have happened. Be, no, they wouldn't have because they never would have gone there in the first place. They, because the time has changed. But they wouldn't no, have where that point in time diverges, everything that happened before it still would have happened. Yes, but... 
But no. they even talked yes. as fuck about it. But that's what I'm saying is it would have happened in the main universe, not in this side universe. Because that's it, why I do the lines. It happened in the past, <laughs> but they wouldn't have they wouldn't have gone back as long as Spock exists in the current universe. No, they yes. wouldn't have. Go- okay, it's no. possible that they do. Yes, but it is not a guarantee because things have changed. So because of this, no. because of this time. In the alternate universe, in the okay. standard uh, universe, they now, did. now do you guys understand <laughs> yeah, on, why this on. gave me a headache in two thousand and nine while I'm watching a great but, movie trying to figure all this? If shit out. my no. logic is sound on this, it's not. You're wrong. No, if my logic oh, is sound because these time travel events. Because okay, it's you, say time it, travel <laughs> has never happened. No, then Earth got wiped out already. But what I'm saying is. It's the paradox of it happened in the future. They have to exist. Yeah, in yeah that. but the new one that hasn't happened yet. I'll follow you on that. But it's like, but it's like this is Spock's they old did line. did exist to travel and back in time to the point the new just line. like Spock did. That's right. what's happening. But, but all exists. Hold on. But that is why – that is the time paradox of time – that is the paradox of time travel in mm-hmm. alternate universes when you go on the base in the main universe because they have to exist at that point in their future to go back to that point in the past. You can – that could explain various changes that since they don't actually end up in that same situation, they never go back in the past. Everything leading up to that point did, but when you add in time travel and the paradox of, of alternate timeline time travel, that's where you end up with these problems that just because they do in the prime universe, that's what people call it, they don't in this now parallel universe. I would argue that because of the point where it diverged, <laughs> yeah. nothing had changed at that point in time yet. I mean, Enterprise should have taken place in terms of a limit, because that's pre that's pre in, in Nero terms of coming the back. The whole idea of sort of drawing a going from point A to point B. Yeah. By the way, this is going to be a really long. Hold on, this is going to be a really long podcast. By the way, so anyone listening, <laughs> will we're just going to record. So, yes. The way I look at this <laughs> is the timeline does diverge at that point by Nero going back in time and doing what he does. Right. Correct. Meaning the future is all up for grabs. I'm not saying in the future Kirk and Spock go back and do the whale thing and but, all that. But that sounds so wrong. What I am saying is this: <laughs> given the fact that that Spock existed to travel back to do that, meant at some point on Next Gen they traveled back to the times of Mark Twain with Data Head and everything like that. So given where the points diverge, it is entirely possible, depending on the logic you follow on this, that there is still a data head out there somewhere. Yes, yes. The data <laughs> head could still be buried on Earth. Yes, absolutely. And all the time travel stuff and you know, and all that stuff could still happen. But that's the problem with alternate dimensions and, 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 this time, and the paradox of time travel is that because it's created this parallel universe, it splits at the point that Nero comes back and first does his thing. That's when it creates the second universe. And – if the future, if things don't line up properly, again, next gen may be completely unaffected. So, yes, Data travels back in time, meets Mark Twain, loses his head, they go back, they then parried it in on Futurama a few years later. But if they don't, things like the whale, they could end up being different. I mean, if you look at the events, right? Yeah. Hold on. Because if you look at the, specifically the whales, look at the events here. The events is they run into Khan. Years later on SETI Alpha 5, thinking SETI Alpha 6, he goes off into space. He does his whole stuff with the Genesis device. They blow up the ship. He creates the planet. He creates the Genesis planet. Spock is killed, lands on the planet. Or Spock is killed. They shoot him down on the planet. He grows up on this planet really fast. He gets de- gets destroyed by uh, by Doc Brown, or while well, Doc Brown's on it. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I mean you're right. Just, you all, you're all following me, right? Okay. Yes, yes. You're all following me here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they then, at the end of that movie, they're outside, and the reason they're able to go back is because they're like, oh, sling shut around the sun, go back in time, boom. If they don't run into Khan, they may not end up in that situation. Spock may not get killed. They don't end up where they are because at that point, they're back on, if I'm not mistaken, they're on – they're not on Kronos. No, they go back to Vul- They go back to Vulcan at that point, which is now gone. So they won't be in the position to go back in time. They get no, the whales no, the same. But that's not what we're arguing. We're arguing that that already happened. But that this is not happening anymore because it's in the new line. No, Charlie's saying they very well still could have already been in the past. But if the future doesn't exist for them to have traveled back into the past, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, I'm. See, this is and where things parallel really, really, I, I forgot about what we were arguing about. <laughs> See, this is where, in general, <laughs> you like get into really weird paradoxes. And that's the paradox of time travel. Yes. 
That's and exactly. That's not, all I was I'm saying. Not, I'm which not is the arguing paradox that of this there podcast. isn't the potential to. If have... one of you motherfuckers make a Big Bang Theory joke, I'm gonna fucking stab a fool. Okay, because that <laughs> oh, shit's I'm glad you no. said that. that awful. Was coming up next. That shit's awful. <laughs> but the way I kind of look at it, there is, is a really funny. Big Bang Paradox. No, it's not. Episode. Right, going, it's, it's a Big Bang Theory, so it's not funny. I if Nero was capable of existing to go back and basically... But he left the Prime Universe. i got to call it the Prime yeah. Universe. I know people hate it, but that's what people call so it. He left the Prime Universe. Though. Uh, but here's kind of my thought process on it. He left Given the Prime the Universe when he's old. Of time travel that happened pre when he traveled to... Things would be a lot more fucked up than they were if, because if you recall back, to, especially to the data head thing, that was back in the time of Mark Twain. Earth was already fully kind of invaded by those things that were killing people. No, and like I said, well, much like Doctor Who, there very well could be fixed points in reality and time yeah. where things cannot change or will happen or guaranteed to happen. Well, I or, didn't argue that. Well, right. And it's so it, that's what I'm saying. The booster gold bat girl. Yeah, it's very possible that this yeah. is going to happen, but. That's the point of alternate realities that is not set in stone. But I guess my mentality is is the only way to fix the point of divergence from going back in time and affecting time when you have other time travel that existed is basically you, you got to look at that particular time he went back to. Basically, it would almost be impossible to say that time wasn't more affected by him going and changing the past from there yeah, because yeah. all the subsequent time travel that would have happened before that would have <laughs> affected things a lot more. Right, right. I mean, and, and that's – until they show until they show a detailed history of everything that counts yeah. in this universe, I mean, we'll just want to know. Right. Yeah, I know. So, I don't, did I ever but, say but what I thought I love the fact I, I didn't that finish. Oh. I just love the fact that there could we'll, technically we'll be a data head buried, yeah. maybe never even recovered. In well, this Kirk and universe. Spock, or Kirk and McCoy, and there could be a crazy McCoy running around in the 40s, yeah. and, and, and I'm, I yeah. And they could still have DS9, they could still travel back to the Tribble episode, and, you know, yeah, I mean, all that stuff could still happen. Well, that's where they're still in the Prime Universe, for sure. Right, right. Because it depends on where you count the actual... Div- right. Yeah. Continue, Brock. Brock. Brock, Sorry. Would you like to give us stars? <laughs> so I didn't like the first film at first because it gave me a headache. <laughs> oh yeah, only <laughs> you. Which, if you don't have a headache after listening to all that crap, um, like I, I said, it all makes sense to me. It, I'm, no, no. I'm perfectly it, it fine. To me, <laughs> it's, it's one good. of those things where I'm I'm like, my brain has to process, do all that stuff. So I I walked out of the theater going, oh, I have a headache, and everyone's like, what's wrong with you? That was awesome. I'm like, I know, but it was time travel, and I had to fix it in my head first. And then when I watched it again, I was like, okay, this movie's fucking awesome. Whatever, right? Um, everything aligns, so on and so forth. And then when I watched this one, it's a better film, uh, more action. Uh, it's really, really great. So I think that the first one was a great kind of modernizing, and this one just kept it going, and I, I hope they do more. So I give it five stars. Oh, I guarantee they will. I mean – I guess I, I want them to do more. Well, wait, it's going to be a conflict of interest because <laughs> Abrams want... is going to be Wars and Trek. Oh, so. he's, he's already said he's not doing three. Um, yeah, he, oh, he, what? Yeah, no, he's his guys. Uh, are, his guys are going to do it, but he's not doing it. Yeah, maybe Damon Lindelof will. We could finally get our Lindelof. Star Wars versus Star Trek. Uh, they should. They totally should. They'd be. Did you guys hear about the fight like in England? Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At some sci-fi convention yeah. that the well, Doctor Who fans were trying to punch the uh, the Star Wars fans, and I nobody did. got arrested because then nobody landed any punches. They were just swinging at each other. <laughs> well, here's my here's my take. I mean, I'm not going to give it five stars because I got to reserve my five stars for the absolute, 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 absolute. That is going to be Man of Steel. So very possibly. Which, um, I think I think he actually reserves it for Green Lantern. So we well, all know what Ryan's yeah, case is. Or happen. Avengers. So we have to go back in time to change that. Yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, to me, this you know, the first one I I absolutely loved when I saw it. I was like, yes, this is modern track. This is how yeah. you do it. Like, this is a different generation. No pun intended. I I love. I mean, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. I love the original series. I love Next Gen. Uh, I love DS9. I love Voyager. I have not seen Enterprise. I need to watch it. Um, I there's you're some. Not, you're not missing anything with. Well, Enterprise, you know what? It's so funny. You know. Final season. He's Enterprise. The final season. Enterprise has gotten some modern love. Uh, people hated it when it was on TV, but I think people have kind of come around on it, going, "Yeah, no, this has actually been a, this was actually okay." Like, there's been a lot of retro love for for Enterprise. Cult. So I'm. It's called cult. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> it has a cult following. So, so I'm, 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 I got, I'm. I just wish the seasons were cheaper. 
I finished – well, that's never going to happen. Star Trek DVDs are so expensive. Um, I finished watching DS9, uh, which I actually don't like the ending of DS9. Um, but I'm going to go on to uh, – I'm actually going to rewatch Voyager because I, I really enjoyed Voyager, much like you, Jim, when I it was on. I enjoyed Voyager. I just wish they wouldn't have rushed the finale. Uh, yeah, it seemed like they it, seemed, it. it was pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, the end was like, oh, and we're back done. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I do want to rewatch Enterprise. Uh, I've seen the movies more times than I can count. I've seen Enterprise. I, I like Star Trek V, okay? So <laughs> – Is that the one with the whales? That's the one. No. That's, that's the, the one, one where they meet that, God. That's the one that how you rate all bad movies, but okay. Yeah, I – Star Trek V to me was had some great moments. Had a lot of great character moments. I mean, it was, the plot was not the best, but I, I I think it's better than most people give it credit for. Um, yeah, I think one is probably the worst. Yeah, I don't I don't like one there very much, but it's fine. It's like a big episode. However, these new ones, like yes, this is how you do Star Trek. Star Trek, you can't do boring political i love boring political shit in star trek but you can't have a big budget movie with boring political shit it's just not gonna fly today i'm sorry yeah. people it's not gonna fly if you're a trekkie and you're like fuck the jj verse I, you're I, whatever but you're never gonna get it so don't don't just give up because it's never gonna happen um tv show yeah possibly so for what they did with the first one it felt right it felt good it all made sense to me yeah sure okay rushing him to the captain's chair and all that whatever this is a new one though Man, this is how you do comic book movies, and no comic book movie does it. You start out in the middle of a goddamn scene. You don't be like, oh, slow intro. No, you start with them fighting a villain, and this they're in the middle of a mission, and shit's going crazy. That is how you start comic book movies. If I see another comic book movie that isn't Spider-Man fighting the, the fucking Vulture or Batman, you know, the second Batman movie when he starts out fighting uh, uh, Scarecrow, Scarecrow yeah, that's yeah. how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste my time. Get right into the action. This new one, I mean, doesn't let up. It's super fun. The continuity works for me. I don't have yeah. a problem with it. Yeah. Uh, con, no spoilers. Or, or big spoilers, I mean, of, of course. No spoilers. No, yeah, no spoilers. Big, big spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> no surprise, but, but you know, once the oh, movie but. was on, I mean, I, I shut down. I had no idea going in. And I heard rumors, of course, but I, I had no idea. Watching it, I'm like, oh, it's totally con. It's yeah. just not even a question. And then he's like, con. And I'm like, yeah, no surprise. See, the movie I was very, like, very uh, clear. Up until the point when they were talking to him when he was in prison, yeah, I wasn't expecting it. Then when yeah. they started talking to him, I was like, oh, oh yeah. no freaking way. No <laughs> way. Honestly, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> coming out of the first movie, I'm like, I really hope they do con. <laughs> and everything they kept talking about and – every like. Like Ryan, I kind of avoided any confirmation of that so I could kind of sort of do the holdout hope. And that's part of what I loved about this movie is I tried to intentionally stay away from stuff that could possibly spoil those moments where you kind of go, I really hope he turns out to be Khan. So when he, they, he finally like said it, I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> and then like when he um, – See, I'm going to keep spoiling shit, too. Yeah. And then when... Um, Ryan hasn't watched the movie yet. <laughs> <laughs> when Spock contacts New Vulcan and Leonard Nimoy comes up on the screen, that was like, fantastic. Fuck yeah! That was fantastic. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. No, it was great. Um, yeah. And to me, the continuity with Khan makes sense that, you know, yeah. Vulcan got destroyed, so they go out, and the, they go out, they find him earlier than Space Seed, and they, they use his abilities mm -hmm. to do all this stuff. Again, I had no problem um, with the continuity of it. Everything works for me. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, different actors and whatever. Uh, the Klingon thing was a little goofy, and I'll give you the one thing. The only time during the movie where I was like, well, what? that's a little different. But the it foreshadow? Could be, well, no. I don't but, like the foreshadow. But it could be because of this different universe that things change, so something mm -hmm. changed. But the one thing that stuck out to me was when Uhura was like, oh, I, I, my Klingon's great. It's a little rusty, but great. It's like, no, Star Trek 6, 6. She doesn't know Klingon at all. She's terrible at it. It's like, no. <laughs> like, and that's the only thing that bothered me in the whole movie. That, but it, but it didn't bother me. You. But that's it didn't bother me. You. Yeah, but it was like, oh, yeah, no, she doesn't know Klingon. But I, but in this new universe, because of the events of the past now, for some reason, studying Klingon is now super important to her. So awesome. That's totally fine. Um, Again, I, fine with alternate The timelines. only thing I didn't like was... Um, over, maybe it's just because we're too much into comic books and seen this so many times is when, uh, spoilers, Kirk dies. No, wait. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kirk dies. I was like, wait a minute, which Khan. one of the two? Died? Yeah, dude. When 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 when, <laughs> when Spock yells Khan, yeah. the whole audience yeah. just cheered. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, but, but I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, the, everyone. <laughs> yeah, but the, the the triple foreshadow with the blood, things yeah, coming back to yeah, life. I was like, that. that was too easy. Yeah, you yeah. saw that. I almost would have liked Kirk just to be dead, well, and then okay, that the was next... a lot better than the oh look, Pepper's falling into the fire. She's gonna come back and save Tony. I mean, it's funny you bring up Iron Man three. Because while this movie was funny, I felt none of the jokes were at the expense of the characters. Much like the first one. To me, that was where Iron Man 3 had its biggest problems, where I felt the jokes were at the expense of the characters, especially the Mandarin. Although I laughed multiple times, multiple times in this movie. And he brings up uh, Mandarin again. Uh, but what I'm saying is I had no problem with any of the jokes in this movie. They oh, all God. felt... Yeah. We got Simon Pegg throughout the entire film this time. I was like, yes! Yeah. Oh, he yeah, was yeah. genius in this yes. movie. Yes! Especially when he was running down the car- corridor. That was really uh, great. I'm running. <laughs> I'm running. I'm still running. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, well, this, he goes, this, 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 what do you call him? A major bastard or something? The, uh, the one thing that I took away from this movie that I'm, I'm sure a lot of people commented well, on. Before you go there, did anybody think that it was a Borg ship at first? Because that's what I was yes, thinking. Yes, right. I did. Square, I had... square spaceship? All like, yeah, holy yeah. fuck! For yeah. half a second. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's funny because this is a very post-9-11 Star Trek. I mean, you, you literally have Predator drones as those rockets and everything like that. It's a very ripped from the modern headlines Star Trek movie. So I, yeah. I, I thought that was an interesting approach to go for because the original series was was very uh in the middle of of civil rights and mm-hmm. uh, uh the sort of the vietnam war and and you know not vietnam war but all the there was a lot going on during that time and they were very reactive to those type of events and i felt this almost kind of had a little bit of that too which which threw me off a little bit and so i, I kind of liked that touch uh, some people may not but i you could probably thank damon so, for that I, yeah. I, after seeing the movie, and even now, I'm not saying that this affects my opinion of it at all, but I did read one semi-negative review of the movie today by Felicia Day, which, like, she didn't say it was bad, but she was commenting that she was very disappointed in, like, scenes, like, where they brought in all the first officers and captains and how, like, none of them were female. And oh. I couldn't help but think... You know, if Roddenberry was still alive, he would have made sure to sort of. To me, here, here's here's the here's just the, the way it is. It wasn't like that in the original series. It's but not like that in the he military. He wanted it to be. I don't in, right. like. He wanted the. Um, I think he wanted the captain to be female originally when he and, first and was trying well, to get the show made. Well, he had like number one. He had a uh, 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 Major Major Barrett in, in the pilot. As the first officer, um, was she the first officer, or she was she was a commander of some form? She may not have been a first mm-hmm. officer, but she was on uh, she was on the front. Uh, she was on the front of the ship. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I'm just saying that I kind of since, since I, we've I, seen literally one female captain in all of Star Trek, I'm. Oh, no, we saw another one. We saw there was a female captain also in this movie. Was there a female captain? Yeah, there was a female captain. The the woman uh, on one of the ships. Oh, man. One of the ships, uh, there was a female captain. Um, In in this one or the first one? In this one. In this one. Yeah, because I think I, 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 they, I they, remember they, tweet Felicia they, Day about they, it. They did. They actually <laughs> they actually went, showed on on one of the bridges on one of the ships. They were they were looking at something, and she was a captain. She was sitting in the captain's chair. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's possible. I don't know, but but I didn't spend I'm, the movie thinking about it. So I yeah, just I, I'm not kind of realized after reading that that putting that is very kind of anti. It just seemed like that was very very important to Roddenberry and his vision of the future was sort of he, you know. <sighs> I love when the original. Like Ryan's like blogger hates gonna come uh, out. I love like, the seconds. I love the original Star Trek, mm-hmm. but let's be honest. The original Star Trek uh, people with the craziest fucking rose colored glasses and put no no offense Charlie but put word in the Roddenberry's mouth. The original Star Trek was not about peace and love. The original Star Trek was not about all, all the things people say it was. Every episode of Star Trek ended with a punch. Every episode of Star Trek involved physical violence. Every um, single episode of Star Trek was about Charlie's getting angry. Now, now no. possible Earth was better despite every single Star Trek having bad humans. but but So it doesn't matter. Money still exists. Greed still exists in every aspect yeah, of but, every Star yeah. Trek. But I feel like Star Trek was the first show to be multicultural. It did. 
Star Trek did a lot of things, but it's not the show people make it out to be. It's not this. Uh, it, 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 th- there were there were aspects of it, but every version of Star Trek has been offensive to so many people in so many different ways. And, and this idea of this oh, it's a hippy dippy peace and love crap. No, it never happened. Never existed. This is people s- remember this. It was never like this. Every single episode of Star Trek has some sort of either. Some sort of conflict or physical violence of some form. It's not a. It's not a free I'm, universe where it's like like the people have this. Biz- Sorry, Charlie. People do not actually have. If you believe that Star Trek, you never watched it because that's not what it was ever about. Okay, I I agree with you that Roddenberry may have, what we got. Roddenberry may have talked about it, but that's not what ever aired. Yeah. All I'm basically saying is. Not that we got that in the original series and not that we even got that in Next Gen directly or any of the stuff that followed up. But I do remember a lot of basically reports coming out about stuff that he wanted to do that the network kept telling him you can't do, that you can't do, that they I, won't let him do. I don't doubt it, but that's not what, this, but that's not what aired. Yeah. And, that's, and my- that's all I'm basically <laughs> saying is that I have no problem with this movie. I just there's a part of me that kind of thinks that we didn't exactly we have never really had a true replacement for the voice that Roddenberry brought to the Star Trek universe. Like nobody really kind of but then carries I'll, the torch that he carried but, for this property. But then I'll argue we never had Roddenberry's voice on the on Star Trek. Because the things that people things claimed he did said change radically after he died, and a lot of the stories that were being told, and yeah. a lot of the directions it was yeah, taken. Yeah, it got a lot better. <laughs> so, <laughs> ouch! You don't want Stanley still writing comics, dude. You didn't uh, want Roddenberry writing that. next writing next gen. Roddenberry was a great visionary. He had a great property. He did some great stuff on it. I'm gonna call His- it out. Gene Roddenberry and the Star Trek was the original Fast and Furious. <laughs> so in the new Fast and Furious, oh, all geez, these cultural oh, references. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, Dominic I, Toretto I, is really the original Kirk. No, I, so I, I've, Roddenberry to Star Trek is like Lucas to Star Wars. I, I have heard all the stuff about Roddenberry, oh, and Lucas I don't, I don't believe yeah, – I, 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 I firmly believe that he had these grand ideas for it, but not, not little of it, but it, – but, the show was never what people said it actually was. And this goes to I, the movies and next gen and everything like that. So a modern Roddenberry Star Trek would be no different than what we've got. In my mind. Because it ne- unless he – Lucas did and, and wrote the script himself and, and directed it and paid for everything himself. Uh, the the only thing that not I, not that I'm against female captains or anything like that. I love Janeway. I'm I'm backtracking. My no 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 no. My best Woo-hoo. friend's a female captain. Uh, no, all I'm saying is <laughs> what? no 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 no. I love. I have no problem. Well, what about with, a gay captain? Yeah, I have no problem with anything. <laughs> what about a transgender no, captain? No, I have no problem That's with data. that. I have no problem. That's data. I, yeah. I, I have I, I have no problem with any of it. In fact, I would like to see. Any version of any of these things. Any they, version that Soy Saldana be a captain. Oh, man. Sure, exactly. Yeah. No. All this is fine. Okay. All I'm saying is it never was. And I agree with you that there are definitely things he was not able to do that he wanted to do. Okay. Yep. That's that's all I was. That's all I, just, I was trying to say. With I'm so. so are you saying think five stars? Nobody Ryan? trying to do that anymore. Five stars is reserved for very, very specific movies. Uh, I think the so, first is Fury six. So, huh? so give yeah. us a rating. I think the first is a four, and I will give this four and a quarter, maybe four and a half. I want to watch it again. Okay, he said four and a half. I, I, What's a five I star movie to you? I'll, I'll see your four and a half. I'll sign. Yeah. Five to me was. See, he was, said five was Dark Knight. Uh, was Dark Knight five to me is is is. Avengers. Hopefully Superman. No, Avengers. no, Avengers is not a good movie. It was a fun movie, but it was I mean, not I, a good I mean, movie. I give Avengers like a four. I mean, I mean, I, I again, I will reserve a well, four and a half, maybe. I will reserve five for the movies that I think are 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 we'll we're every Lantern. every single level. Yeah, what do you uh, give Green Lantern on this scale? I would give it like a three. I enjoy okay. Green Lantern. Okay, no, he's being honest. Though. Yeah, right. I'll I, give it a three and a half. I yeah. give it a t- 
two. I like Green one. Lantern. I like Green yeah. Lantern too. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. You're not you're not by yourself here. I enjoy yeah. Green Lantern. I know. No, it's all about the Daredevil. See, see, we outnumber you now. The Daredevil <laughs> gets a one. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, you motherfucker! <laughs> I'm gonna okay. give Green Lantern right, a one just going? because of that. Where are we going with this? Okay, two thir- two fifths of the podcast shuts down now because you guys want to talk some Doctor Who spoilers. Yay! Oh, yeah. Massive, massive, massive spoilers for the season finale of Doctor Who. Doctor um, Who. Jim, and, and what's your we know. I, I don't know how much we've ever talked about Doctor Who in the podcast. We have occasionally. I, I've I watched it a bit when the older stuff. I'm I'm working my way through the modern stuff and the old stuff at the same time. Brock hates everything. Watched that one Charlie episode, and got a headache, and and never went back to it because it involves <laughs> oh, time travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, time tra- involved, <laughs> I, didn't I didn't even think about the that. episode I watched. Didn't even I involve did. time travel. I know. I'm joking. It was some weird thing with like Charlie uh, monsters. You're gonna closets. hate it. Charlie was a bit of an old school fan, huge modern fan, and yep. has pretty much become just a huge mega fan. Toby, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, you never watched the old stuff. You're no. just new, right? You're yes. just a new Trek fan yes. or a new Who fan. You know who's but, to blame? But starting to want Charlie. The Charlie man yeah, is to of blame. Course. Now, Jim, I watch, no, I watch. I don't some, know. Yeah, what's your what's your Who origin? Right, so, so I've watched some of the old. Okay, I've watched some of the new. Okay, I've been, really enjoyed a lot of the new. Uh, I'll ha- I have River Song's uh, <laughs> Sonic Screwdriver, which really pisses off my kids because the, they still have the Eleventh Doctor's Sonic Screwdrivers, <laughs> and uh, I'm the only one who has that. But uh, as far as the series go, I really I- I'm really really getting into it now. So where so. are you at in terms of watching it? Uh, you watched need, the finale I, I, though, right? I, I did watch the finale. Okay. Yep, because I was just actually prior to that, not not so long ago, I was wondering: is it has anybody ever broached on the subject of the Doctor's name? And then all of a sudden, boom! The season finale, we're going to find out what the Doctor's name is. Except so, for spoilers. Except for spoilers, we, we do still, not. We still do not. So, well, they River dealt Song. With it River Song said his name in order to open the tomb, and yeah, nobody ever heard the or Doctor say it, so. talked about the significance of the name he gives himself. It's probably like. Todd or something. Like that. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be the doctor? But anyway, uh, the, so the, yeah, I, I, the is I'm fine thing. with spoilers I, because I'm so far behind. I, I hear it all in the geek box anyway, so I'm um, just talk ahead. So okay. go, go ahead, guys. So so far, these basically this past entire season, and, and Brock shots his mic off. Um, has been the question of Clara and why the doctor keeps meeting her and why she keeps dying. So that's a large part of the mystery, and that's one thing they did firmly answer with this finale. Which is really brilliantly answered, too. Yes, because it actually makes sense, and I love things that make sense. Um, Although, don't tell Brock, because I might blow his head off. Yeah, it just might. So the Doctor's friends... You make one goddamn comment about a headache in dealing with time travel, and you fuckers go on a (laughs) huge-ass... Just because, argument over fucking time. Just, oh, and now you're still trying me, to give me, me shit about you, time stuff hey, on some hey, show you, I don't you, even you fucking fought, watch. You fought Ryan Higgins' time travel thing was something big talking about. If we were to really start explaining you what's going on in this Doctor Who episode, yeah. it will definitely make you play. Yeah, if, you think, if you think Ryan's rant on, on time travel fried your mind, you would well, never thing, comprehend I, Doctor Who. I, I wouldn't, Not go, even I wouldn't, I I wouldn't like go watch the Doctor Who finale. I'd try and watch something beforehand. Oh, it's still messing with my pretty well, too. I'm out. Keep going, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> so the premise behind going into this is they've already foreshadowed certain big events since Moffat took over. And each time they foreshadowed, the somewhere along the way, he will have been there. They did it with the Pandorica. They did it with um, this current one because basically... The doctor's been told that he's not going to be able to lie when he reaches Trenzalore. That basically the question will be answered and silence will fall when the doctor goes to Trenzalore. So the great intelligence basically starts kidnapping the doctor's friends through time and takes them to Trenzalore knowing that that will bring out the doctor. And Following, it, okay. And it turns out that Trenzalore is where the doctor's tomb is. Basically, that is where someday, somehow, he ends up there, and he ends up dying, and the TARDIS is sort of left behind and becomes his tomb. So the doctor has to basically cross his own timeline in a huge way because he now knows where he's going to die. And they manage to bring in... um, 
basically they bring back River Song, they bring back Lady of Astra and Strax and Jenny. And the doctor goes here, he basically is confronted by the Great Intelligence, where the Great Intelligence is saying, What is your name? because that's basically the password to open the doors to his tomb. And River Song, who isn't really there, she's sort of a mental projection, and I guess because of the psychic circuits of the TARDIS, it's able to communicate with her still. She says the name where nobody else can actually hear it, including the audience, opening the tomb. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And what you find out is the reason why the Doctor's tomb was such a closely guarded secret is because what a Time Lord leaves behind is basically scar tissue through his journey through time. That if somebody's able to basically get a hold of that Time Lord essence, they can essentially rewrite time wherever he was. So the great, in- now mind you, by doing this, you're basically splitting yourself off into all these different versions of yourself. So you essentially die. Because you're kind of there and gone everywhere at once as you kind of do what you're going to do there. So the great intelligence basically goes back in time to basically undo everything the doctor's done. Which is a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is a lot. So, For only what we've seen. Yeah. So Lady Vostra goes outside and she just starts seeing literally stars going out and like planets going away. And time is kind of having a fucking shit fit as basically the doctors being undone and clara basically goes in after the great intelligence to basically undo what the great intelligence did continue and um so clara basically splits herself off and she start it explains why she showed up and died those various times within the doctor's timeline because that's what happened she's basically split herself off and start appearing at all these different timelines and like she interacts with the first doctor when he's stealing the TARDIS she bumps into various doctors and like they took stock footage from various old episodes of Doctor Who where they could kind of splice her in and give her some sort of even if it was just bumping into him at the right time a sort of push in the right direction where he needed to go to win the day still. Who steals a faulty TARDIS? Now, uh, we were talking Star Trek. Is this similar to, uh, let's say, the DS9 Trials and Tribulations episode? Were In they, the were way they... they implement it, yes. Okay. okay. In the way that it, they take some, basically, stand-ins where they need to, but then use the real footage where they can. But no. Do they bring back any uh, doctors for original footage? Not as far as I could tell. Um, and not yet, Not as maybe. far as any of them have said. Okay. Now, mind you, the big reveal I mean, was... Well, is it like if they go to like the Christopher Rockland, is it like in an established episode or is it kind of like... It's in an established episode. Okay, okay. Like there, or like a s- people... side footage that they just didn't use or does it No, it, appear... it seemed to be all established footage, Okay, so they literally just literally shove her in. people okay. who are much more hardcore about some of this than I am who have identified which episode from right, each right. footage. Didn't one, one, one scene look like the Doctor was running through Comic-Con? Yeah, there was a scene with the second doctor where he's running through sort of a grassy area that looks like it could be in San Diego, San Diego right? Huh. During yeah. Comic Con, nice. and um, <laughs> and so in the end, basically, she ends up having saved the doctor, and it's this big thing about how she was essentially born to save the doctor. But the doctor, of course, won't let her go, so he goes into his own sort of time stream to pull her out. And after he goes and gets her, the very last reveal is that there was another incarnation of the Doctor that we didn't know about. So this pretty much confirms the The real real ninth Doctor. Yes. This was the John Hurt, which the Doctor denounces, basically says. Hmm. Because he basically says the importance of your name is, is a promise you made to yourself. And what that version of him did, the Doctor would never do. So, so he's a doctor, but not a doctor. Yeah. Basically, he's a doctor that 
the doctor himself refuses to acknowledge as the doctor. Yeah, is this like a Dax thing? God, Star Trek all up in this place. Is this like a, oh, I got those, that, that, that one Dax that was the fucking murderer that was a Curzon? No, not Curzon. Which one? I remember. Uh, I'm was pretty a, sure it's going to be basically the, 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 the doctor was, was that, responsible that for the genocide of what he thought was the Daleks and the Time Lords. And that like is, the big t- like the big war, yeah. Oh, because because they've never explained that they've never. Well, ex- they've explained he's the one that oh he, brought it to. Oh, an they end. did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, he's the one that brought they it to. They never explained end. how he did it, or, but or, they, or what? What they really didn't go into like the. I mean, the war. They've always been. They've been fighting they've, back to the Tom Baker stuff in the earlier. Here's so. the way I look at it. Um, <laughs> So the time war they've established was this big war between the Daleks and the Time Lords, well, well, where time travel was being used to bring people back and keep the war going to a point. Well, well, well something <laughs> happened. Let's go back between in time the, and bring between it back. the original series and when they restarted it, because he's like, "Oh, I'm yeah. I'm the last Time Lord." So, so exactly. something happened during that time period, which they reveal is the time war, and a right, little, right. little bit more and a little bit more come out about the time right, war right, as the right. series has gone on, and. To me, the explanation of how the Time War ended, I pick up from an episode of the first series, so one you've already seen, Father's Day. Okay. Because there's a line in Father's Day where he comments about how he's going to go out the same way as his people. Huh. Okay. Which was when they created the big massive paradox that those sort of entities show up and pretty much sterilize a wound and erase everything linked to said paradox from time. Okay. And they've talked about how the the time lords are basically seen as legends at this point. Like, like they were pretty much supposed to be wiped out because the doctor still exists. They kind of still right existed, but that's why they make it sound. They make it sound like basically the, it's all whispers and stuff out there. It's not funny. You should say whispers, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, so my interpretation of that is basically the time war was ended with the doctor creating a massive paradox to basically wipe out everybody involved in the time war. Okay. And that's sort of the way I see it, meaning that somehow he survived it. And I mean, he acknowledges he didn't expect to survive it, but right. somehow he came out of it. But that, that seemed to have been the case that somehow he basically was responsible for bringing the war to an end when the time Lords, the time Lords wanted to wipe out all of existence. They basically are saying we're losing this time war. Well, we'll just wipe out everybody else, and that way we'll bring an end to time, and therefore we win. <laughs> cool. I can't wait. Yep. So I am. Uh, when when is so the, the, and, this, and this leads directly into the fiftieth anniversary? Yes, the fiftieth anniversary, which has basically at this point three doctors confirmed because John Hurt is definitely in it. David right. Tennyson, uh, Tennant is definitely in it, and Matt Smith is definitely in it. So we know at least three will be involved. Yeah, yeah, and that's all that. That's now that, that can very easily expand. They, they've already filmed various things, and I can at least tell you some of the doctors were out of the country while they were filming. So unless it's a cameo, they put in later. Char- Charlie's got I'm like you know like locked yeah, on those, those yeah, who exactly. fans, man. You gotta watch out. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're all always watching. Him. No, no, he's yeah. in the Bahamas right now. Not possible. What fans? Who fans? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, they can still add in various footage taken as we get closer but yep. I, that that's actually my one fear for the 50th because i'm very very excited for the 50th but given the way moffat's writing is compared to russell t davis russell t davis would make the 50th as big a spectacle as possible as big and epic as possible like he always did the finales during his run i was like when he finished his run too no i have all the doctor companions are there all the there's two 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 doctors i haven't seen uh, much of the moffat stuff but i've i've kind of gathered that his is more i want to say more fantasy well, like, it, more magic-y, where Russell T. Davis was more sci-fi, more like... No, well, I, I would think- say Moffat is... <laughs> Russell T. Davis, the way I explain him, is he knows how to do epic, he knows how to do emotion, he knows how to land the stuff in the way that he wants to land it, but he's not so good on the, we're going to really explore this story and explain it fully. Moffat the, seems the character to, moments a yeah. little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, Moffat seems to be much more along the lines of he wants to explore the sci-fi elements, the time travel and the what all this means and how like he's the one that comes up with concepts like the 
the word doctor comes from the doctor because he's the one that basically figured it out that with the way the doctor's been time traveling, the word doctor exists on like every planet and means something different depending on what he did on every planet. So there's some planets that saw the doctor as the word for great warrior and there's other planets that see doctor as healer and that kind of stuff. So he's very, very into the sort of sci-fi and what effects the doctor would have on the world around him where I think Russell T. Davis was much more into the... I'll use time travel to explain stuff where I have to, to yeah, get yeah. past leaps in logic to a degree. <laughs> well, the, the, the way I kind of look at it is... Um, I mean, both are very character-driven stories, yeah. but... The way I, I, I personally, I mean, I read an article on this, and I have screwed my, my thought on it a little bit. Russell D. Davis is more like about other things happening in the show. There's a big bad, there's something attacking the world, there's something happening, and the doctor goes saves the world. Right, right. And in Moffat's one, it seems like the doctor is the uh, centric yeah. uh, character. Something's happening with the doctor. they got to go figure out what's going on. Something is, you know, it's very... Um, doctor based like something happened that the doctor did and so on it's it's a little different dynamic and i appreciate that you know you never want the same thing twice either so i appreciate it but this is one of those things where i kind of figure the strength of the show is the writers you bring around you because moffat's not the only one writing stories he was writing stories during the russell t davis years. yeah I kind of feel like he needs to bring in some... Bring in Russell T. Davis back? Well, he nice. wants to have Russell T. Davis write some, and he's pretty much said no so far. But I kind of feel like it would be it would be a step in the right direction to sort of bring in some different style of writers, just like Moffat was a very different style than Russell T. Davis. And I'm not saying that... Um, what do you think of the new, new Neil Gaiman episode? Oh, I really like that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm more than happy if they keep bringing him back to write an yeah. episode here and there. But like, I, I don't feel like um, I think his Mark Gatiss, the guy who does Sherlock with him, is very like. I kind of feel like he's very similar to Moffat, but not quite Moffat level. I kind of think they need some other sort of. No, they just need Moffat to write every single episode. Oh, that that would probably help yeah. too. But I guess my point is there's there's some kind of hate for the current stuff. Yeah, it, I mean, I I I wonder if it's maybe time to seal the storylines, and maybe it's time for Moff. I mean, don't don't kill me, guys. Maybe it's time for Moffat to move on. Maybe it's time for the next guy to come in at this point. You know, it, it feels like a lot of the stuff. It's been awesome. It's been there. It's been done. That and maybe maybe that's kind of the end of the the run now. So, well, I think. I think it's fine if he stays on. I'm not ready to sort of say Moffat needs to leave, but I will say since he's taken over, each season has sort of directly led into the next with more than – like you could kind of argue that, well, this season had this companion leave or this, so it let – well, that's – now, didn't this That's episode give you a really, thing. really nice end to River? I thought this was a nice finishing touch. Assuming like, it is the end of River. Yeah. Which I, I'm... I but, I mean, if we never see River again, I felt like yeah. this was a really nice, like, bookend to her. Yeah, it was Now, it was speaking awesome. of that, and I want to... used during this episode now, was awesome. Now, I want to I wanna go back to uh, Silence in the Library. Did she actually die in that episode? Or did she yeah. Not? She did? Yeah. I don't remember that part. I thought she yeah, didn't. Yeah, she sacrificed herself so the doctor wouldn't have to. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's um, right. But the, the I guess sort of the bottom line is you can almost see series five, six, and now seven all leading up to the fiftieth. Yeah, because basically series five, by the time you resolved it, he resolved the big climax, but he didn't know the root cause. Yeah, I mean they, then, they've been hinting at the whole name thing for like yeah. seasons now. And then the series six again, he kind of like started to get closer to what the root cause was, but again didn't quite fix it because that root cause was all leading into this so we're, we're finally kind of at what could be considered the end of the road with the 50th yeah so as long as this was all sort of his great master plan to sort of build up the 50th to have this ready to go to have this be some epic conclusion to what he's been building up over th three seasons now that's all good as long as he kind of goes and now i'm not going to start my next big epic well have they, have they confirmed i mean he's on for season eight or yeah, okay. he's confirmed he's on for series <clears throat> okay. eight okay i just think he needs to russell t davis was very good at 
when series one ended, series one was satisfying. When series two ended, series two was satisfying. You didn't really feel like, and now I'm being strung along for another. Like you, you really need those big ending. Yeah. You feel it's resolved, and then you can start building up to the resolution again. I kind of feel like the problem with a lot of these shows that have the mythology growing and growing and changing and. A lot of people complain basically about the X Files, about all like Lost, all these mythology yeah. shows, constantly building up without giving you the satisfying the payoff. S- There's no mm-hmm. the payoff. That by the time you get to that payoff, you you kind of feel like you you stuck around that long for that. The, yeah, I mean, the, the I mean, payoff doesn't it doesn't doesn't talking in regards to that. that no, I mean, I'm going to challenge you, uh, Charlie. Talking in regard to that, I mean, me watching this last episode, Clara was awesome. The whole, I mean, the whole explanation yeah. was cool. You know, the the whispers were kind of like the uh, the gentleman and Buffy, yeah. which was really cool. I, I, you but, know, hold on, before you go, I was going to say I've had a few people tell me the wh- whis- whisper men, the yeah. whispers. They're, they're called whispers? whispers. Yeah. Okay. Um, that they're like the best villains since like the Weeping Angels. Uh, they're, cool. they're badass. I don't know. I, I, I still like the silence. The silence, the silence too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they're, they're minions of the great. But, but it's funny because well, we yeah, have. But they're like echoes of him. Yeah. Right, right. But it's so funny that we have like the the Whisper Man, the Silence, the Weeping. There's very this, silence. This is very right. There's, there's something very weird that they keep going back to this, and I almost wonder if there's some is could there be some. Connection? Or I don't know. Well, because it, 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 seems, it seems like such a reoccurring theme. It is. So yeah. the Whisper Men with the Great Intelligence was basically what the silence was trying to prevent. Mm, okay. Because the silence was all about killing the doctor so he couldn't end up on Trenzalore. So he couldn't, like, it, it's almost like the, okay, when this happens, everything dies. So we have to kill him before this happens. So everything lives, kind of chicken or the egg stuff. But that, okay. in theory, would have just well, that could also be why you wanted well, his body burned. Yeah, I didn't even get to my question actually. Yeah, yeah no, go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to challenge you. I mean, compared to the previous one, like the Par- Pandora's box and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I feel like I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, it was a great episode, but I feel like this has kind of been a letdown compared to even previous Moffat finales. See, I, I feel like the doctor screaming into the sky of all these spaceships looking at him and they, you know, slowly like figuring out who he is and then moving away. I thought that was grander and bigger and epic, more ep- epicer. Is that a word? <laughs> epicer? <laughs> then, then, uh, then, then, that, that's uh, that's a sequel to epic. Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, what's it called? Um, the doctor at his tombstone with the great intelligence, who I think they didn't really develop that yet, well yet. I mean, we, well, we saw the great. I mean, is, am I wrong that the great intelligence in first old, show up in, in no, the Christmas a, special? He was in the Christmas special, but he's an old Who villain. Oh, okay. So he, he uh, there's a little history I didn't know about. Yeah, then. there's. Okay. It's actually a weird thing because they seem to have actually created an origin for this old Who villain that didn't necessarily exist before. Mm. So there's a lot more interaction between him and the doctor up until, like he didn't have a the same physical form or anything as an old Who villain. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I mean they do it quite a bit yeah. on the show. Yeah, but um, the the kind of bottom line I see it is this sort of finale was not even necessarily finale. It was all like, okay, this is going to be our setup for the fiftieth. This is going to resolve the Clara question, and this is going to be. Almost our sort of homage to the past doctors, which, I mean, hands down, if I had to rate my enjoyment between the two, I enjoyed this one more because of the ties to the past doctors. Okay. Well, now, it was really you, cool to see the first shot as like the first doctor. Yeah. I was like, whoa, whoa, where is this coming from? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think, in a way, for long time, time Who fans, this was like I've already watched it like three or four times. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Um, now, mind you, I agree with you. The Pandorica, the way they set it up, the way and this that is was something an epic I, episode. I, I have to admit, I love the fact that in that finale you had like the Daleks, the Cyberman, the Santarans, like everybody there, and it was all because of the Doctor and and I. Yeah, no, I see. I so I so, completely agree with you that in terms of the sense of epicness, yeah, 
That because was it, much closer to a Russell T. Davis. Yeah, thing. because I, I felt like his homage to Russell T. Davis, I mean, he might have not done it because Russell T. Davis had this epic finale where all the companions are there, all together, all, you know, one doing one thing, all but, in the TARDIS. And then this one was like, all the villains are together, you know? But to me, while I agree with you that that was the most epic of the finales that Moffat has done, yeah, I don't feel that was more epic than the Dalek Cyberman on earth i didn't think that was more epic than the master i didn't think that was more epic than davros i mm. did like i don't really like the master for some reason i love the master oh, he's great yeah. the I love master's the master. awesome yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah dude that 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 the dalek like taking over the earth that all yeah. oh, that was and even if you consider it the finale finale of russell t davis's run the end of time that was <laughs> that was amazing that was yeah, he knows he knows how to do epic. He knows how to just hit it just right and even though it's it's a few years old. I did uh finish up um uh Torchwood no. uh, a couple weeks ago. No, you didn't. You didn't no, watch Miracle, do Miracle Day. Miracle Day, Day but... I didn't watch season 4, but besides that, I will finish yeah. up the yeah, BBC Children Torchwood. Earth. Children Earth. Holy Children shit, Earth. good. Children Earth is amazing. Yeah. 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 A Torchwood tights into it was it's a, a spin off of uh, Doctor okay. Who. It's, yeah. it's 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 the X Files spin off of Doctor Who. It's the and Captain Jack spin off. It's it's the Shield TV show before the Shield TV yeah. show without <laughs> superheroes. Yeah, but did aliens. you see this pilot? Did you see this trailer for the Shield show? No. Oh, yeah, so the, you know you know the Shield, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming out, right? Yeah. It it's the exact same thing as Torchwood. I mean, I mean, it looks awesome, but it's it's the team of humans for the most part in this crazy X Files world, and they're like the last line of defense before the humans. So it's badass. Torchwood's but amazing. But they're Black Ops. Right, right, right. Torchwood's The amazing. Avengers are still out there somewhere. Right. And the Doctor's still out there, right? In <laughs> yeah. Torchwood. So. And yeah. Coulson's a LMD. Yeah. yeah. Or Vision. All right. Maybe he's multiple LMD. Any? <laughs> you guys, anything else for who? You guys want to? Uh, it's um, a fantastic I'm show. I mean, super, definitely. Super, super excited. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, November twenty third. Twenty third. Is that right? For fiftieth. Okay. Yeah, I think mean, there's going to be a big thing at San Diego Comic Con. Oh, they've are they they sent out like a a thing of like at the beginning of the year or something, saying that these are our plans for celebrating the fiftieth, and they sort of talked about how they were going to do because they have the fiftieth anniversary special, then they have the anniversary special for the fiftieth. Well, so at San Diego, it should be Sunday morning is when they've generally done the Doctor yeah, Who stuff. That's what I'm counting. So on. Wednesday night, you can find Charlie in line for the Doctor Who oh, panel. Absolutely. <laughs> or Charlie's life model decoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, what, the previous Sunday <laughs> morning, <be> <laughs> yeah. Charlie will be in line for Doctor Who a week before the panel, and then he'll be he'll be the first in line. So. Yes. And usually yeah. I'm stumbling <laughs> to him uh, eventually I, after I, certain I, 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 I don't know if they can really, like, there's all these sort of, like, possibilities floating around in my head. Like, at, at the very least, I'm kind of expecting they're going to have Matt Smith and David Tennant. You know they will. I'm, oh, I'm figuring they're going to have at die. least those two. But there's also the possibility of bringing in some other doctors just because this is the 50th. I mean, they could literally do a panel for the old Doctor Who and bring in the old Doctors, and then a panel for the 50th with the new do- oh. so so Just do them all. Just, like, just, 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 like just, just give me everything. Just nerdgasm? I think yeah. he nerdgasm. He did. Just the thought <laughs> of it made him nerdgasm. <laughs> Hell, you're gonna just take over Hall H, all Sunday, all Doctor Who. It's almost yet in that way, isn't it? Well, it's the only thing there on Sunday that's yeah. worthwhile. yeah. All it's right. funny that Charlie is one of the few that actually see me stumble back to my hotel room. <laughs> like, Toby, it's 3 o'clock. Who's yelling for my name? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to wrap up. This has been beyond an extra long episode. So You're welcome. Uh, this is the yeah. giant size ex- yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very giant size. Uh, we don't. We, you know, we usually stick pretty pretty comic. This is a fun non-comic episode for the I most part. I think Doctor Who needs to be a normal part of this podcast. <laughs> And it can be because nothing new is happening. It could be the Who November. Cast. It could be the Who cast. There is a there is a Doctor Who comics. So maybe uh, yeah, maybe we'll figure something out. I need to catch I up. I actually on read that. some of those. I like them. Yeah. I was going to ask you, Charlie. Did you enjoy the Star Trek Doctor Who crossover? Oh series? yeah, that was really well done. I yeah. got both those in graphic novels. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're really well, awesome. really good, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, well done. The, the the new comic they've been doing too, the um, Prisoner of Time, the Borg and Cybermen. I thought it was really cool. That yeah, was really yep. cool. They yep. just need to put it in one hardcover. Yes, yes. Then I'll buy it. Yeah. Yeah, and the Prisoner of Time book they're doing right now is, is fun, too. So it's like all little one-shot mm-hmm. stories. That's yeah, it's good stuff. I'm curious where they're going to go with that. I need to get you to order me the forgotten hardcover that came out. Huh. 
we'll do that off air. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap Everybody up. Everybody contact Ryan Higgins to order you the forgotten hardcover that came out. We're, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, thank you for listening to this super, super extra long, not really about comic books episode of The Comic Conspiracy. Uh, yeah, we probably won't do this for a while, but you never know. We're going to have some Superman to talk about in a couple weeks. Uh, I mean, obviously, big Can't comic wait. stuff. Fast and Furious it, next week. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, Age of Ultron's wrapping up. We're going to have... Uh, Are we going to see Trinity Ultron? War starting. Uh, you know, there's... Comic Con's coming up, so it should be a big summer. Lots to talk about. Um, if you want to hear this episode, uh, oh, and Jim, thank you very much for coming back out. Uh, we'll see you in six months or so. Figure probably <laughs> yeah, the next time you're around, <laughs> I'll be listening from Taiwan. Thanks yeah, a lot. Excellent, excellent. Um, if you want to hear this episode or any of our other episodes, you go to comicsconspiracy.biz or thegeekbox.net. Uh, you can go find all our episodes on there. Uh, we're also on iTunes. Go, go, go! T- subscribe to iTunes. Download. Give us a rating if you want. We're awesome. Um, five star only, please. I was I at one point was reading them on the air, but then we didn't really get too many of them. So, so maybe maybe I'll go back and read a bunch we, next time. Because he never read them to begin with, so they stopped I, writing. I, I read a couple of them. There's a lot of stuff we started to do on this podcast, and then just I we know we're finished. Yeah, yeah, well, you know that would involve emails work. from like four years ago. No, I deleted all Favorite those. Picks. Remember? Yeah, Granum picks. <laughs> hey, we did those last week. Um, <laughs> If you want to send us an email, which I will read on the podcast, uh, it's the comic conspiracy. Yeah, maybe. Well, I got like five. Or, I got like five or six that I got to read still. So uh, the comic conspiracy at geekbox.net. Uh, you can go to forums at geekbox.net and go talk to us on there. or all in the comic forum and the regular forum and everything. Uh, you can leave comments on the front page too on the actual episodes. Uh, we all do random things. Uh, I got this. I got the store comics conspiracy biz. Uh, Brock's got his blog conspiratorbrock.com. Uh, Omar, who's not here today, but uh, normal, uh, he like hurt his knee or something. I don't know what the, the what? Hell. He hurt his knee or something. I don't know what's wrong with him. Karaokeing um, again? Maybe, maybe. Damn. Hardcore. Uh, Although um, with Omar back, we're going to be talking Superman Unbound. So guys, we did watch it. We're oh, just holding out yeah, until yeah. Omar is back. Omar wanted to talk about Superman Unbound, so we're so going to we'll, gonna wait. next week. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about that with him. Uh, he's at comicsandakind.com. Uh, Charlie has the Infinite Long Box podcast. Infinite at, Long Box. At infinitelongbox.com. Uh, we're all on Twitter. Ryan Higgins, Ryan, Brock Sager. Uh, uh, Toby XI is Toby. Insanity and Cast is Charlie. Uh, Omar is Comics and Dekine as well. Jim, I heard you're doing a Twitter thing. You want some followers? Sure. LD Exterminator. LD Exterminator. Okay. I got to follow you too then. Yes. <laughs> so. So you uh, have at least four coming. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I guess. Kill, I guess. Killing I zombies know. around the world. Nice, nice. <laughs> In Taiwan especially. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I think that's everything. Um, uh, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. You can buy some digital comics from us on there. Uh, There's yeah. always sales, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which I actually talked to some of the guys from Comicology. Apparently, they're going to start linking the sales back on the main page. They keep promising they're going to switch that site, but whatever. I don't even. Are we ever going to get. At this point, it's been, who knows? I don't even. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. It's never going to happen because that means maybe it'll actually happen. Sure. So, so are you saying I should start giving you links that you could put on, like, not the site, but a link to go to the. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I just don't even know what <laughs> the hell they're doing. A link to go doing. to the link. Yeah, we exactly. support, the, we, you know, you buy through stuff through that link, digital, uh, uh, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. Uh, you know, it's a little bit more tricky to go through there, but we get a little bit of kickback from that. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, support the store instead of giving Apple your money if you want. Uh, My poll list is always directly connected. So, so there you go. Uh, and yeah, we'll be back next week for episode 110, a little more about comics and about half as long of an episode. All right, we'll talk to you guys next week. <laughs>